I'm just doing the usual thing, doing the uh, Google search, see if there's anything, anyone else had the same problem. Sometime okay. this... Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Southwest Florida TechNet, and we are now broadcasting live on YouTube all around the world. And I want to start out tonight by uh, putting a shout out to our friends in Ukraine. Uh, I hope that they hang in there and do what they have to do to protect their freedom, just like we would do to protect ours. Uh, I just want to put that out there. God bless them. Uh, and they are holding strong tonight and something really to be proud of. Um, the contest this weekend, uh, they had a big contest scheduled for this weekend. Of course, it's been canceled due to the war. And we'll talk about that towards the end of the night. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there uh, that uh, they're uh, still going on over there. And uh, it's it's uh, it's a real mess for the whole world right now. But we are not going to do geopolitics on this show. All right. Uh, so tonight we're going to be doing the hex beam. We're going to be talking about a couple of different versions of it. We're going to be watching uh, a couple of uh, videos of them actually being put together. Uh, and then I'm going to also introduce you to my new Anytone radio that I got for 130 bucks off of Amazon. And I'm absolutely thrilled with it. And the reviews are really good. So I'm going to talk about it. I've been using it on a bunch of the area nets, including uh, this. Yeah, let's, we'll, we'll turn you down. Uh, including uh, last night, I was actually on the, uh, uh, I was actually on the Simplex net last night and got just the same performance out of it that I would normally get uh, out of my 50 watt Yezu. So for a 25 watt radio, it was doing really good last night. So I was, I was very happy with that. So uh, we're going to talk about that and I'll show you guys that radio. Um, I'm going to use it for a few more weeks, but I think I've already decided to buy me one for the bedroom and to buy me one for the van. Uh, and that way I have one of these in, in all three places where I spend my time. Um, I don't think they'll let me put one on the console at the radio station. So, uh, We'll just leave that one out. Okay, uh, and then after that, we're going to also discuss, uh, last night was the first Southwest Florida watch net. I know a couple of you guys tried to get in, and we're going to talk about that because uh, uh, the repeater's not very high. We're going to discuss that a little bit later on. Uh, but I only had one check-in, and it was a little discouraging. But thank you, Rick, for checking in, um, K4RAB. And thank you to the two or three of you guys down south that tried to check in and couldn't get to the intent. I appreciate that as well. And um, and we'll we'll try it again next week. We'll see if we can get a few more people. Hey, if I can grow it by one person a week, there'll be 20 of us, 25 of us by hurricane season. So we'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that's where we are at tonight. So first, uh, I want to go to Rick, uh, k 4 r a B and uh, get an update from you, Rick, on uh, on your antenna, and uh, see how you're doing on it. And if you want to screen capture, you're certainly uh, able to do that. Go, uh, uh, go ahead. Okay, I'm in the process of. If you okay, you're really low. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> you hear me? All right. Is he low to everybody else? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to um, transfer a file from my down. phone. Uh, which is a picture that where I am now. Can you hear me all right? Apparently okay. not. Yeah, oh, we can yeah. hear you. Yeah, we, yeah, can, we hear can hear you. you. I'll right, make sure I'm using the right microphone here. Oh, you sound good now. Okay. All right. I don't know if that was me or you or what. All right. This should be done. All right. I'm trying to transfer a file up to the uh, thing here. All right. Let me see if I can get this to where I can show it to you. Uh, maybe it downloads. Okay. That might be it there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me, let's, uh, can I share a screen? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, I didn't go look at it. Let's get rid of this. I got too much stuff on here right now. Hold on. Let's get rid of that. Now. Share screen. Ba-ding. Can everybody see that now? You see anything? Uh, uh, yeah, we see it. We got it. Okay. 
that's the uh, that's the mast my hex beam's going to go on. Uh, that's uh, the uh, top is at about the 20 foot level. The rotor will go on top of that. This is a Penninger uh, radio uh, setup. You probably see the little thing in a minute. You may have seen some of these around town. Some of the some of these uh, city installations, uh, they use them. Some of the some of these places for some of their antennas. This is pretty heavy stuff. So I thought I, and you can also see my X50 on the left. That's my VHF UHF antenna. And you know, of course my uh, infed half waves are out of the, out of the field of view here. Uh, they're invisible anyway. But anyway, I wanted you to at least get an idea of what the thing is gonna be mounted on. Of course, I'm still in the process. You can also see my, uh, you see the jealousy window over at the left and see the cables coming out of the window. Well, that's where the shack is. And they go down to the lightning arrestor panel, which is on that uh, four by four, just right on to the right of the air conditioner. So anyway, that's what my installation looks like. So I will unshare this and we can continue on. Let me see where I do that. Right here. There you okay. go. All right, yeah, and I, I had picked one that I was gonna do and I still may do it, but uh, I'm having a hard, did I send you a link to that, Rick? That one Gee. that I was, well, I, I had ordered one and then they sent me a thing back saying that, that uh, it's out of stock. That they can't they can't send it to me so i oh, went great. looking i went looking to buy another one and then they contact but i don't i for some reason cannot find the link to that thing didn't i did i send you a link to it you may have i don't see it in my e let me check my email and see i cannot believe that i cannot find this thing because i it has videos uh, and everything let me see if i, I got an email here uh Let's roll this up and nope. let's see. No, I don't see anything. The last thing I got from you was the uh, Tech Team newsletter at 1221. I mean, I emailed them and I can't even find that. It's crazy. All right. What is the, uh, it was in for, what was the guy's call? You see the one in uh, Pensacola? um and for i'm not sure i i i'm trying i've been trying to think which one it is god bless i am so like aggravated right now because uh yeah i understand that's the Let one me... i wanted to show everybody tonight i mean that's that's the one that uh that's this thing i swear i think that might be it right there yeah 660 this is it right here i got it it's the um there i'll share it okay i got it i was i was starting to get frustrated but i found that email and it gave me the link okay in a four rr is that his call yeah okay yeah this is it right here guys yeah this okay is the, this is the one i'm probably going to get like i said i ordered it and then they sent me a thing back saying they didn't complete the order because they don't have it in stock and so um they contacted me back and told me that they have everything in stock except the fiberglass poles. Okay, and if yeah, I that's want, been a problem. They will let me get the fiber. They'll tell me where they've already given me the location to get the fiberglass poles. Yeah, I max can tell them systems. exactly, and I can tell them what I need, and they'll send it to me. But God knows how long that's going to take because they're ba everything's back ordered. Yeah, I know. So I I don't know if I should go with this now because if I can't get the polls for six months, you know what I mean? It's maybe I should have went with something else, but. Well, I, still I checked with him and he had that same problem when I looked at this. And so I decided to go with the uh, K4 KIO one. Uh, you might want to check with him too. Now this is going to cost you a little more, but it's K4 KIO hex beam. Yeah, that's it. This is the one I've got. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now this will wind up being a little more expensive, but not all that much. 
Well, the thing I liked about this one, and I'm gonna we're, and I'm gonna show you guys. There's a video. Um, I just gotta find where it's at here. But there's yeah, actually, I want to see the video. Um, let's see. Here we go. I nearly went for this one, but he had yeah, yeah. I think I've seen this. Well, you'll see why I want this one because I really, I, I truly like this particular one. Uh, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. It's the center pole design that I like about this one the best. The center, that's the center pole. All okay. the, all the wires are on the inside. They're all protected. Yeah. K4KIO has the identical same one. That's what mine looks like. Look, that center pole comes yeah. wired out of the box. It's ready to oh, go. Oh yeah, which is nice. You there don't you have go. to mess with that. The wiring's done. It's got the connector yeah. right on the side. You just hook it yeah. up. Yeah. Um, and then you got lugs on either side. And on one side, there's like uh, washers, obviously, because uh, the the one side is the uh, is the the negative. The other side is the driven side. So it's going to have to be have a little washer in there to, to do it. But I don't know exactly how they got it set up. But the, these are the poles that I don't have. I mean, yeah, I, I those mean, are the spreaders, and you. One of the things you're going to need to do is paint the thing. Yeah. Because they don't come painted. So I paint you some gray. Yeah, that's exactly how mine's put together. I've got to put those things back on it. But uh, he's getting, you can see he goes to the stop. Okay, fine. Yeah. But I want you to see, notice this man puts this antenna together and puts it up in under 90 minutes by himself. Yeah. Um, that's what I, that's, that was the appeal of this one was that center stock is already done. And I know yeah. I'm the guy that builds antennas, but I want the perfect antenna. I want somebody else to build it. It's better than me. Yeah. I yeah. really do. I, I really want the perfect antenna. I, yeah. So the K4 I KIO be... has that same center piece. So. Yeah. And I could go get it and bring it because I've got it inside here. Okay. These, these are, are really wide. cool. Yeah. These, are all pre, these come pre-made. They're pre-made yeah, already them. linked. Yeah. Either one of these pretty much same way there. So again, not that hard at all here. They're already pre-linked. They've already got the little, they're like those little bungee cords you get at Walmart and a little kit yeah. of bungee cords. They're the little teeny ones that we always use to hold our radios down and stuff, but yeah. they're really, really long. With and, all due uh, apologies to our friends in Huntsville, this is not rocket science. <laughs> uh, yep, I, I really want this thing. Um, I, I watched this video and I'm like, this is the one I want because. Yeah, I think you and I both are going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh, so finally, if you could point it down my end and we can talk on the uh, SSB. There you go. I, I have no doubt that what, you know, that once I get this thing set up and I dial it in on you, we'll be able to talk to each other wherever. Uh, probably 20 during the day would be best. But even, you know, with this, like today, we could have talked to each other on 15. 15 was wide open most of the day. I was on 10 most of the day. 10 was doing good. Uh, how many bands is this? Uh, this one is uh, 6 uh, through 20. 6 through 20, including and, 12 and 17. Yeah, it includes everything. Uh, no, it well, it doesn't include the CB band, but it includes all the no, hands. Yeah. Well, you well, there's, use there's one of these I looked at that you you can leave off one of the ham bands and they'll put the C, it's a CB band. It comes either way. Oh, really? But I never use that band. Well, see, now mine is uh, pretty close to this. I ordered everything but six meters. And the reason I did that is that I understand there's some interaction between six and 12. So I thought, well, I'm going to leave that out because I want you know, my directional pattern to be right and everything. Now, he's going to do, he's doing something that I, very similar to what I'm going to do. I've got a table. I've got an umbrella table out on my side yard 
which I'm going to use to suffice to mount this thing so I can comfortably put the thing. It'll be a high enough that I can work on. it. Yeah, you can also just take a fence post and drive it in the ground two feet and stick it on yeah, top of that work. while you're working on it. Yeah, yeah it'll work. But, uh, um, or he's got a bucket there of cement or whatever. That works too. But yeah, yeah. This is, uh, I just, I like the fact that it's a single man operation. I don't need to call five guys over to help me put it up. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about pushing my, uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, mast up when I've got the rotor and the uh, antenna on it, because it's a little rough, but if I get into a problem, I may wind up call it going, getting my next door neighbor to help me for a couple minutes. Well, there you go. He works no. on uh, seawalls, so he's a pretty strong guy. I kept wanting to yell at this guy, just open it up some more. (laughs) Quit being lazy. There you go. (laughs) Hey, it works. Yeah, that's that's a good idea there. That way the wind can't uh, start kicking it around and your hooks come out. Look how fast this guy is. I mean, he is fast. Yeah, well, I can't work near this fast. I don't it's like want the work opposite near of that. government work. Somebody must have told him the Russians are coming or something. Yeah. Yeah, they sped up some parts. Yeah, that's all they did. He yeah. said it, it. They said it took just under ninety minutes. Yeah, well, that's not bad. All right, now we're going to start. I think we start putting on the elements now. I can't wait to build this thing. Oh, we're going to start with the six. Yeah, that's right. You haven't gotten yours yet. You won't. No, like I said, I'm kind of in limbo as to exactly which one I'm going to have at this point. Yeah. I technically ordered one already, but like I said, it's on back order indefinitely right now. And yeah, they, it's a matter, it's so on back order, they didn't charge my card. They told me to call them back if they want, if I want it, you know, if, if I this is when I decide what to do. Yeah. They, they were nice about it. Yeah. I did. Yeah, it puts easy, them though. in a bind too. All this, yeah, all this damn problem with everything being on back order and it's not just these it's just about everything see how clean this is i mean it's so clean it just boom 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 i like that center pole because the ones i was looking at had all the wires all down the outside and you had yeah and i didn't like all the wires all the way up and i'm like oh i don't want to do all that yeah I didn't either. Now, did you get the choke bowing with it? You need that. No, I'm going to buy that. It, it does not come with it. Uh, it's like 40 bucks. It's not a lot of money. It looks like four of those uh, uh, ferrite chokes. Uh, yeah, I've basically. been told that the one bowing designs is better. They've got a kit for about $47. It comes in one of those electric boxes, and you mount that up there at the top, and that works even better. Oh, okay. So you might want to look at Malin, Malin Designs, and I forget well, the number. Well, when we get done with this, we'll look at that, because I, I want to talk to you guys about balance, because, well, to be yeah. honest with you, I'm kind of new at this, as you guys know. And I don't yeah. know anything there is to know about balance, so I'd, I'd yeah, like to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually going to put the... Now I got one with this one. It's the choke. It's the beads and all that. But I've got the other type on order. So if I don't find that it works real well, uh, I'll Look put the Allen Designs one up. There, his six elements done. Yeah, that's a six meter element. Now, see, I'm going to probably because of the same issue, uh, Rick. I'm going to leave the six off of mine too because right underneath mine. 
about five feet underneath mine is going to be my five element um, H squared uh, beam antenna for six meters. It's, it's yeah, already, it gets it's a one to one SWR on six meters. It's perfect. Yeah, well, I would leave the six meter element out too. And it's just like I said, nothing against six meters, but I've heard that there's. I had my friend, a good friend of mine up in Atlanta, said he had tried it. And there was an interaction with the 12 meter one. Uh, so you're better off to leave it out. And I bet you I get better performance with that five element Yagi. Yeah. Um, I think you will too. Be lower. I'm going to keep it low enough below this that it won't interact, but I won't use them both at the same time. Yeah, you're not going to be using them at the same time anyway. I'm going to have a wire on the other side of my property. I can use both of those at the same time on different bands. Oh, yeah. Which uh, rotor are you going to be using with it? I don't. This rotor is so old, it has no name on it. Uh, the, t the, the, the rotor part in here says uh, Alliance Dual Speed Control. This thing's probably my age. <laughs> um, it works better than I do. I know that. Yeah. It goes around every morning, not just and every other morning, like me. Or something, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's a neat old. Uh, it's it's the old typical one with the big switch that goes like back and forth, and yeah. you know. But uh, yeah. um, to old Tom Lambie sold it to me. Uh, gave me a great price on. It was like seventy bucks or something. Yeah. And this thing is a boat anchor, dude. Um. You can't kill it. I, I've spun this thing around a thousand times over the last 18 months, and uh, you can't kill it. Yeah, well, it, it may be bigger than the U100, then. That's what it sounds like. It's probably it's big. Bigger. Yeah, it's, well, if it's big. that big. Yeah. And I've got a um, CDE rotor. I had originally gotten a U100, which is the Alliance. Well, the U100 doesn't turn, so I'm going to have to send that to our friends up in, in, uh, in the Birmingham to fix. Norm's rotor service is up there. Yeah. So eventually when I need it, I'll send it up there to be repaired. But the one I got is a uh, CD44, CDE rotor. Now, what he's doing here, guys, is um, as you guys know, this is a directional, meaning that yeah. uh, there's one, one of the six sides of this thing is actually the elements don't go across. And that's yeah. the front of it. That's actually the front of the beam. Yeah. And um, what what he's attaching now is uh, basically the uh, the uh, beams that are the, the uh, straps, what do we want to call them, that are going to hold the proper distance in the gap yeah. part of it. Yeah. And he's going to have a mid, midway one, and he's going to have one way out here on the outside. And that way, the thing is the right shape all the way around. And, and you can adjust it up and down to get the right shape so that everything matches. I mean, I, I know that uh, back in the old days, ladies would have loved this for a clothesline. I mean, you could have hung your entire laundry out at one time on this. Oh, thing. yeah. It would have been easily disguised as one. And some people have put these at that level in their yards and had pretty good success with them. So yeah, and probably told their HOA that's what it was because they were allowed to have a clothesline. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. They come see mine. I go say, man, that's a. How do you get up there to hang your clothes on that? <laughs> uh, well, here we go. We're going for a ride. Look at that. Look how clean it is. It just Look attaches right to the side of the thing, man. And you're done. Yeah. I was like, oh, I like that. That's that's really nice. Um, and then the other thing here is uh, under products. Um, here's the balance they offer. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh... I was looking at uh, looking at something like this. Yeah. That's what I have. Yeah. And but I'm thinking really, like I said, I went over to Bowen Designs and we go over to that site and I'll show you which one it is. It's BowenDesigns.com.
Now, go down to do it your DIY kits on the left. You'll have to do a little building, but it's it cuts about twenty dollars off the cost. Uh, it's the one on the right, that one there, and that's the guy. Everything's pre-drilled, and all that one fifteen U dash K. And you think that's better than going with the uh, the one that just goes on the line, like the? Yeah, uh, I think it is. That's what I've heard that it is. Um, this is uh, actually supposedly capable of three kilowatts, but <laughs> it's just it's so much better when the factory solders stuff rather than me doing it. Yeah, well, if you can wind a toroid, which you only got to put about what about ten or eleven turns on it. You'll have instructions and everything. Um, and then you put your uh, put your uh, 239s on each end. And then you'll have to figure out a way to strap that thing up to the top. Because it needs to go up there real close. You'll have to build a little jumper with uh, PL259s on the end. Uh, and it goes uh, up, up close to the top of that. Um, Oh, what do you call the thing in the middle? The center post. Yeah. I don't know what you, what do you call that thing in the center? The center adapter piece in the middle. That's what I call yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I, I, I was looking at these here and, uh, at least you've got heat shrink to go on yours. I don't have any heat shrink for my. I'm not going to well, worry the thing, about it. If you it. buy this, it comes with every single thing you need, and it's forty yeah. bucks. And I can put that right on my existing wire, and I don't have to solder anything. It's yeah. not that I don't want to build things. You guys know I, I've built more antennas than probably any ham that's only been doing it eighteen months. Yeah. But the bottom line is, I want this to be perfect. I I want it to be weather resistant. The stuff I build looks good performs well okay doesn't look good performs pretty good um and uh and works pretty well doesn't hold up the weather all that well you know don't know how the storm rating would be on it i'd rather have something like this that's you know that's built by professionals and i just put it together because i just want something that's gonna be maintenance free and then i'll play around with the other stuff when i have a chance yeah um yeah you see then you gotta have the you got to have one of these on there is what they recommend. Well, now the faith in K4KIO says he didn't recommend doing that. Really? Um, yeah, because they develop, um, and I've got a couple of those around here, but he doesn't recommend that, he, that you use that because it's just, it's something else to create a problem. So. Yeah. I know these little connectors are a problem more times than not. So I, I've, I just know a lot of people that have, they'll be like, Oh man, I thought it was my radio. I thought it was my antenna. I thought it was my cable. It turns out it's this little connector that I had, you know, somewhere along the line. Yeah. It just literally went bad for no reason. It doesn't get yeah. wet. It doesn't get torqued around. But anyway, this company here that, that I'm, that I was looking at or may still be looking at uh, NA four RR you can buy all the pieces too. Yeah. Yeah. And he does. Uh, I was thinking I've about. I've talked to him too. Yeah. He's real nice. You know, I can buy the entire kit. They'll sell me the entire kit for 460 bucks. It's just, it's just minus those. Uh, the fiberglass poles. The fiberglass poles. Which and then you'll have to go to I think Max they're kind of get them. Yeah, and Max Gain had the black ones in for two hundred dollars, so that's going to be what it would cost you. Well, see, that's the, the thing. If I if I can I could buy this kit from them and then buy two hundred dollars from them, and that's the same price. Yeah, the poles are worth two hundred bucks, no matter where I can get them from. Yeah. Ah, uh, good old Broadcast Center soda. Yeah. Yeah, I looked very very hard at this one. And like I said, the only reason I didn't go with him is that he just didn't seem to have it in stock at the time. So I checked with Leo Shoemaker, 
at uh, K4KIO. That's his call. And he's up in uh, not next to Birmingham. This guy's in Pensacola. Yeah, Pensacola. I don't know. I uh, I don't think you can you go wrong think? with let either me, one of them. Let me hear from the peanut gallery. What do you guys think? What's your thoughts on this one? Wow, I, I'm so encouraged by all that. Maybe they pick. Maybe we put them to sleep. I, I don't know much about these, so I don't have a real strong opinion. All right. Well, anyway, that's what I've been dealing with. Um, so, so has anybody out on the internet done reviews of the two of them? Yeah, you know? look on Eham's got reviews on them. You know, I have not done that. But that that might be the 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 thing to look at. I know that um, a buddy of mine whose whose funeral was today, um, he had uh, two or three different hex beams, and unfortunately, I didn't ask him before he passed which ones he's gone through. But he's up on top of a a good sized ridge, and these things get caught in the wind, and they oscillate back and forth, back and forth, and um, all his aluminum pieces, um, where the bolts go through it, that wallers them out. Um, the um, the aluminum mass that he had it on, it got to the point where it completely wallered it out, and the whole thing's kind of halfway toppled over. Mm. Um, and every time he goes to work on this thing, he has to go to Home Depot and rent the bucket truck. Um, and that was until he got his crank up tower in. Um, a, a few years ago, he put in the crank up tower, and shortly after he got the crank up tower in, he found out that he had a blood uh, cancer. And, um, and he, he finally succumbed to that um, on the 21st of um, last month. Oh, man. But um, yeah. So his wife's a ham, and she's now got all his stuff, and I can tell. His room is a mess. It was it was a mess the last time I was there. There was like six spots on the floor that you could step on to get from the doorway to the desk. Oh my god! <laughs> my, my, mine gets that way every now and then. I'm I have to, to clean. This I actually am. Uh, I'm cleaning up tomorrow. I've got to go through here and just straighten it up and try to get some control going. Yeah. Um. Well, I, okay. You, uh, yeah, that's that's an interesting thing about it being wallowed out. I don't we we don't Metal get the same fatigue. wind they get in some places. Um, I will admit we don't get uh, we don't get those blustery days, days after day after day down here like they do in some places. Yeah, um, metal fatigue. Yeah, yep. but that's still something to be concerned about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, no antenna is permanent. You know, I I'm I'm figuring this thing's probably about a, what a five, six, seven year construct, and it's probably going to be pretty bad after that. I would think. Yeah. I I really don't see it being a fifteen year thing up there. No, I don't either. I mean, I figure if, if it gets that bad, who knows? I might want to try a spider beam then. <laughs> yeah. Spider beam. Spider beam. I think. I so heard it's it's beam. quite it's quite directional. Without a rotor, it probably wouldn't work very well. Correct. Yeah, it's directional. Yeah, it's a, it's a. It's like a two element, two element beam kind of. But they proved to be good antennas. Well, see, when y'all are in South Florida and the rest of the United States is um, in the other direction of where all your signal is going, um, yeah. you need that. Uh, when I was in Texas, I, I didn't care too much about if I had a beam or not because. I was surrounded by the United States and, and Mexico. Um, I could talk, you know, all over. Yeah. I could see where y'all are at. Y'all are y'all are feeding signals to the fish. That's right. On on three sides. <laughs> so it's probably beneficial to uh Yeah, you you, you yeah. It's it's not only the it's not the the fact that you get only a three dB gain, 
um, is the fact that. Um, but then, you know, then y'all don't, the other half of it is y'all don't have all the noise coming in off the backside of the beam because y'all, y'all have nothing but swampland and ocean. Um, yeah, I think there's definitely uh, positives and negatives to being down here on the country's wang, if you know what I mean. Um, I I sometimes wonder myself, like, with my my wire it's in like an inverted v and it used to point uh in it used to point like towards south america now it points more towards the midwest and i i really haven't noticed a lot of difference as far as i don't think it's all that directional i really don't i've been well, told it, they, that they are a little bit but i really can't tell that they are a little bit yeah it, 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 all, it, it all depends on how high off the ground it is unless you've got it um a full half wave um, length off the ground, it's most probably not that direction. Yeah, that's like and a half wave and, and length and off the ground on eighty meters, uh, you ain't got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I wish I had stuff up forty meters. That'd be wonderful. You know, it also mean I was rich and had this great tower. But uh, yeah, yeah, also mean great. you probably experience frequent lightning hits too. Yeah, and I'd also have to get permits and a red light and everything else. Let's not worry about that. Red lights are cool, though. Yeah. On Christmas trees. <laughs> well, at least with, with LEDs nowadays, you don't have to go up and change the bulb as often, and it doesn't cost you as much on electricity. And, and, and you can make it to where it blinks it and says something in Morse code. <laughs> well, that's a funny thing. You see Colin CQ in the visible light spectrum. There you go. Yeah, you can have it do CQ, CQ. Um, security X or whatever, you know, do your call sign and people think that you have a, a problem with your blinking light because it's it's stuttering. <laughs> that would be cool. We could go one step further. We could reverberate it so fast that we could send an audio signal over it. How about that, Joseph? Yeah, that'd be really cool. You just need a... Um... You just point your laser at it and you'd be able to hear the music off the light. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to. Uh, there's a. Um, I saw That's somebody do crazy. that. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not crazy. You could really do this. No, Joseph yeah, and I were talking it. about this. Uh, I was, uh, was about a year ago or something. We were talking about this thing where there was a la- they're using a laser, right? And they shoot they shoot a surface that's vibrating with the sound of a room, and you can hear what's going on in that room through the sounds that are being picked up by. Yes. Crazy, crazy. That's a spying technique used by the uh, spy agencies. Yeah. Yes. It'd also be neat, though, if you had a little box, you could just point at the tower light and it'd tell you what the uh, frequency is and what the uh, call letters were. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. But it's not worth all that. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be a lot of work. The worrying thing would be if somebody replied. (laughs) Yeah, that would be great. You might be able to work a fish. <laughs> there you go. All right. Any other hex beam stuff? Let's uh, finish up with the hex beam. Is Hopefully there any so I'll have mine up by this time next week, I hope. Like I said, keep your fingers crossed. Well, well, what's, what's taking you so long? Because that guy there, he, he did his in 90 minutes. You've been working well, on this for 90 days. What you saw on there was uh, I had to get that, get that in. And then, and of course, I'm working and Everything else is going on. So that's why I told them I'm not going to the ham fest tomorrow. I said, good grief. Every, something happened every weekend. I said, we're going to get this hex beam up tomorrow. Well, Rick, seriously, if you run into a mess tomorrow, call me. I, I'm only about 15 minutes from your house. I'll drive by there. Ain't no big yeah, deal. okay. I'm so, serious. I, I'd, I'd love to help you with it. So if, if you need help, let me know. Yeah, I'm, I may uh, do that. You know, I, I may throw the wife in the van and give us something to do for an hour. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, we we'll stop. Just stop by and help you put it up. You don't have to make us dinner. All right. I have a. I have two questions. Um, is if you get the six meter, is that horizontally polarized or vertically? Yeah, it's all horizontally polarized. Okay, and then is there some type of a complementary antenna that would have forty, eighty, and one sixty? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a complimentary one that would do that, but you got to have a big something to put it up there. Well, not a hex beam. I'm just saying some. I guess you'd have to get some other antenna that would deal 40 and 80 at least, right? Yeah, you piece of wire. Some kind of long wire, yeah. yeah. That's the best yeah. thing. Okay. Well, either an end fed or a dipole or something. I have yeah. my end fed halfway for that. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, because think... I'm I'm moving my wire to the side and I'm putting it back up because I can't lose my wire antenna because I need my 40, 60, 80. Uh, well, I can't transmit on 60, but you know what I mean, 40, 60, yeah. 80. Well, and technically 30, too. And believe it or not, I do, uh, I do work 30. I worked 30, I think it was last night. I got like 30 contacts on there. I don't think so, I've done any 30 since I, I tried to contact you last night. I saw you on 30. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, yeah, I, man, I'm telling you what, I, I, I love FT8. It's on 24 hours a day. I get up at three in the morning sometimes and I just dial it and see what's going on. Um, it's pretty bad. Of course, I've, uh, I've got a problem right now. Um, when I get up in the morning, I get up at two in the morning to go to the bathroom, right? Um, it's not natural to check the news on your phone every time you get up and go to the bathroom. Did you know that? Yeah, so, I know. I they're telling that me that, that it's not natural to check the news. Well, my wife's that, like, that, you, you go in there and I see the light. I She goes, I see the phone light up in the bathroom. And she goes, you're checking the news, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Got to see yes, that. Yes, Adam honey. That uh, well, I, I got away from that. I about after the last election cycle, I got I would I felt beat up. I got away from politics a little bit. I just I was going to work and immersing for six hours and I'd walk away and I wouldn't talk about it or look at it or anything for the rest of the whole rest of the day. But now that this war is going on, I'm I'm understandably curious as to what's going on because it affects every single person on this planet mm. all right and, and again we're not talking about geopolitics tonight so uh there you go, <laughs> uh, you go. anything Thank else you. on anything else on the hex beat? okay I'm just, I'm just curious one thing i yep. wonder if you're familiar with uh, like linear loaded dipoles which is a dipole that goes out and comes back on itself so effectively, a, tw a 40 meter linear loaded dipole would be the same size as a 20 meter linear loaded, yeah. loaded dipole. So I wonder if you could put one of those on the top where, where, the, where the, um, the spacer or the, the combined wires are. Uh, Just a I don't thought. Know I don't know that I'd want to put anything on top of the hex beam, and they're usually encouraging you not to do that. No, instead, right. instead of the mounting, you know, the mounting wires or the spreading wires or whatever they're called, the, yeah. the cords that aren't wires. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether that might, I, I don't know whether that would have as much gain as a piece of wire, though, on 40. It. No. Yeah, it's not you'd gain a little be... bit of directivity, but you'd probably lose out on gain. Yeah. Just a thought. Yeah. I really would love a four. I would love a forty meter hex, but uh, it would literally hang over in my neighbor's yards. I think when it I would spun be it around, huge. Like yeah. that old car commercial said, they say it's yeah. huge, Caroline. Huge. <laughs> and you know now they I, that place now has the worst radio commercials on the radio right now with that yeah. woman saying Cape Caro. <laughs> uh oh. Anyway, yeah. you thought the old ones were bad. Yeah, and this one comes along. You guys know yeah. Billy Facillo got some kind of legal trouble and then he died. Yeah, he died, yeah. Yeah, he's gone. He passed away. All right. Um, I want to introduce you guys to somebody tonight, a, a new friend. Um, you guys ready for this? This is my new friend. And um, her name is Anytone. And oh. uh, um, she was cheaper than most of your overseas brides. Uh this one here was only $129. Um, no, no tax delivered right away. You know, the whole bit. Anyway, um, there may or may not have been tax on this. I don't remember that. Sometimes they charge you. Sometimes they don't with this stuff. Anyway, the point is, is uh, 
uh, I bought this. I got it in. It's sitting right here. Uh, got it right here. And I used it last night for the watch net. I've talked on the traffic net, the simplex net, uh, all the uh, buck and a quarter net. And it's really a cool radio. And you know what's, what's really cool about it is the AB button right here. I didn't know if I was going to like what is all these buttons. Sometimes I'm not much on the buttons on the mic, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm a, I'm a faceplate guy. I like all my buttons on the faceplate. And I really, the whole, you know, the whole time I was a cop and a fireman and all them for 20 years, we didn't have any buttons on the microphone. So I'm, I'm just really not, not a, not a button on the mic guy. But the, this one actually, you can use the buttons to key in the channel, which is cool because most of our HF radios, you can't even do that. But these uh, buttons down the side here are programmable. They're completely programmable. And that's, that was one of the things that I really found to be cool about this particular uh, radio. And here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up and show you. Hopefully, it's still running. Maybe not. Um, but uh, it, it has its own programming uh, software. The only bad thing that, uh, that it has is... Uh, where's this at? The programming software, it doesn't right now. I don't think it takes uh, Chirp. Hmm. Um, that's the only bad thing is uh, that I've found so far is I don't believe it takes Chirp. Oh, I can't believe I can't find this stupid programming software. But it doesn't matter. I, I It looks just like the Chirp programming software pretty much. But the neat thing about it is it allows you to set uh, these buttons like you can set it for scan or whatever I can set it for volume Hit the volume button and then use the volume up and down right here. There's a volume up mm. and down right on the side here um, I like it. nice nice firm mic with a firm transmit button I can't stand these little pussy ass Yahoo Yazoo mics and stuff. I can't stand them little mics. I I was a Motorola guy for 25 years so you either give me a real mic or I'm going to call it names. I'm sorry. You need a mic for a manly man. And you know, the best mics, I mean, I, I'm really not a big fan of these Yazoo mics, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not a fan of Icon mics. Um, I'm not a fan. You know who makes a decent mic? Uh, and I got one around here somewhere. Uh, believe it or not, it's just the damn, uh, those, uh, those cheap Chinese radio mics are actually, uh, they took the design. Look at this. Uh, they took the design from Motorola. Yeah. And it's the same exact dimensions as a Motorola mic. So when I hold this, it, it's not as heavy as a Motorola mic, but it's nice. Um, this mic here is a little bit smaller. Uh, it's just a little bit thinner. And it doesn't have it doesn't have the, uh, the lug on the back. It's got the hook. I don't like the hook. I prefer the lug. But the truth is, you can pull this right off and put a lug. It can be either one. You just take the screw off. Um, and I'll you. probably just leave the hook at this point because I've got both hooks and lugs. I can put it on either one. Okay. Um, but that's what I like about it. The other thing I like about it, see this the little light at the bottom here? It says AB. So right yeah, on the mic, I, I, even if I can't see the front of the radio, I can tell when I hit my button whether I'm on A or B or not. You can see the little light go back and forth there, AB, AB. Oh, I think I'm still on. Take the web, after. take the web page yeah. off. Yeah, there, there we you go. go. Okay. Um, and now I can't see it. There we go. Uh, when you hit the AB, you can see the, the little light right here. These little lights, they go back and forth. So when you hit this, you can see the lights go back and forth. So you can see if it's AB. These lights up here are AB also, but they go green and red. Red when you're transmitting, green when that channel's busy. I like that. So holding this in my hand, driving down the road, um, I don't even have to look down at the radio. Everything I need to know is right here. I look right here. There's my green light for traffic, red light for transmit right there for both my channels. And then if I want to switch channels, I just hit the AB button to the other one and I can talk on the other channel. I like this. I've been very happy with this radio. The screen is very, very nice, very vivid, clear color screen. Um, and I don't work for these people. I swear to God, I've trashed so many. I, I have bad talked some of these Chinese radios that I've not had good luck with. But um, this one so far, I've had good luck with. The reviews are much better on this than the other ones I've had issues with. 
So I think this is a better radio. On the front, uh, there's actually um, six buttons on the front. And the other neat thing about this is these, uh, these six buttons that are here on the front, P1 through P6, those are actually completely programmable. You can program them not once, but twice. You can actually program a function for each button. And then there's a function button. And then you can program another six functions for those buttons. So it's completely customizable. There is no scan button. You make whichever button you want scan. And then it shows you right next to the button what it is. So in other words, uh, it'll show you here right next to the button like A, B. That button changes you from A to B. The next one down or whatever, I don't know what some of these are, but like P6 is volume. If you hit P6, you hit P6 and then you just turn the knob up and down for volume. Oh, okay. I set one for squelch. I set one for power. The power one's great. I set, I set one on here for power. I hit that and then I can go low, medium, high, low, medium, high, and I can do my power from the mic. I can change channels from the mic. I can do squelch from the mic. Whatever you set those four buttons for. Um, and then, there, like I said, there's two banks of six buttons on the front of the radio, and they're completely programmable. I just thought it was really cool. So I just want to pass it on to you guys. Uh, you don't have to spend $300 to get a good mobile radio. Um, this one's not bad for $130. Bucks. It is Chinese, but uh, it's a higher class Chinese. Will it do cross-band repeat? No, it does not do cross-band repeat. And you're going to be hard-pressed to find one that does for that price. Um, yep. the, the only thing I've found that does cross-band repeat for that price, uh, and I don't, do I have it out here? I don't know. I got one up here I can show you, um, is the, uh, the UV. I always forget the number on this one. Um, it's the, it's the UV 8,000 from TYT. This one right here, it's a, it's a handheld and it's 10 watt handheld went out. If you do the Chinese conversion, that's a good seven and a half watt. Um, and this particular handheld, what's cool about this and what I do with this particular one right here, I got a battery eliminator that goes on the back. I got a clip that it that it velcros onto the velcros on the back of the battery eliminator that velcros onto there i hook right onto here i hook a vhf uhf multi-band antenna right up to here and stick it up on the roof and then i set the uhf to one watt and i set it to my experimental frequency and i set the vhf side to five uh to full power and i put it on whatever repeater i want to talk to and then for 70 bucks, I've got a crossband repeater and it works great. The only issue you're going to have with it is even at one watt conversion, even when you're transmitting over at one watt uh, is heat dissipation. And what I had to do when I was using this for like the traffic net or something, uh, because it, the duty cycle was so long, I had to literally like put it right in front of the air conditioner and keep it really cold. But that's my experience with crossband. When you get into mobile crossbanding, it gets it, it it's you're you're up usually higher than 130 bucks. Anybody know of anything like that? Well, aside from your uh, handheld that does crossband repeat, um, yeah, generally it's only the ones that have better quality parts in the metal do crossband repeat, like a Yesu. Uh, mobile or a can or a uh, icon mobile. Now, if you want to play around with crossband repeat, but you don't want to buy a crossband repeater, you can buy this. Uh, let me take the uh, screen capture off. You can buy this thing for forty bucks. Um, it's called a repeater controller, mm -hmm. and I bought this. I played around with it. I worked with it. I actually connected two repeaters with it, and it was working fine. But I didn't leave it on, obviously. Um, what it does basically there's two plugs on it. Uh, there's power, there's a switch, and then there's two plugs. These plugs ha have the standard, uh, bow fang connector on the other side like this. Okay. So they plug into here and then they have this on the other end and you plug two bow fangs into this. 
you put one on your VHF channel, one on your UHF channel, and you spread them out, and there's your crossband repeater. It's great for like little events and stuff like that. Um, and of course, if you put them on repeater frequencies, now you add the power of the repeater. You also add a delay to get everything locked in. But I love crossband repeating. It's something I've been playing with for a while. This was a great solution. This was a decent solution. It's kind of cheap. Um, but uh, but anyway, that's my experience with crossbanding. I, I haven't had a real one yet, I guess. <laughs> but I've had fun with my toys, my China oh, yeah. toys. Yeah. I, I, I started out with a theory about those Chinese radios. You had to buy two of them. Because when you'd speak English into one and it would transmit it in Chinese and it had to be transmitted back into English. But I guess it I know. wasn't like <laughs> My grandchild, who's actually starting to study to get his license, he's 12. I've been working on him. Uh, he's over this weekend. He likes to put his bow thing on Chinese. And, and when he's in there, he's going, and he just hits there and keeps hitting, hitting the buttons. He thinks that's hilarious. Anyway, um, <laughs> Because it only does two languages, Chinese and English. Yes, yeah. But you know what? If you think about it, that covers a pretty big swath of the world's population. Yeah. All I right. Say. So uh, so that's what that is. Does anybody have any questions about that or anything I can help with on radios like that? Anything? God knows I've owned all of them, I think. All the little cheap ones. You've tried them all. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of results you I get. have. Because and and my, like my to... radios fall in two categories, smoked and not smoked. Yeah, so if, if this <laughs> one becomes another Chernobyl disaster, then we'll yeah. know. Surely that's not smoked and will be smoked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. there's only two kinds of radios, ones I've blown up and ones I've yet to blow up. So, yeah. I... I, I wish you could buy magic smoke like in a little tank so you could put it back in. No, uh, you can. No. They sell it on Amazon. Oh, do they really? Yeah. Well, I wonder if I can get it overnight because if I can't it's get it overnight, I won't China, be happy. Too. Like everything else. Did you guys hear about that ship that burned up out there that was full of like uh, custom cars? Lamborghinis and all Lamborghinis, kinds of Lamborghinis, 400 cars, and every one of them was worth over $150,000. Oh, man. You know, that's... And you want to hear the funniest part? One of these cars, it was VW, one of these really expensive cars. They offer you a thing. You order it, and you can follow it through the plant. Like, you actually get pictures of it while they're building it. It's, it's kind mm -hmm. of a... Yeah, it's some stupid thing that, you know, that they, they come to, it's something they've done to massage rich people. And um, so anyway, you can actually go on an app and, oh, look, it's in the factory. Oh, look, oh, look. Well, finally, oh, look, it's on the ship. It's and on it the finally, ship. Oh, oh look, look, that ship hasn't moved in three days. It's still out in the middle of the ocean. Oh, oh look, look, it's on the it's bottom of the on, ocean. Yeah, it's <laughs> on, my, my phone's no longer, my car's no longer transmitting. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, because it sank in the end, didn't it? The next time they'll it, just... Yeah, it sank like it. two weeks later, it finally yeah. sank. Which was fine because it wasn't worth anything but the steel weight at that point. Yeah, well, next time they'll just have to use one of those ships with four smokestacks. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they only made its maiden voyage. That's right. Won't go anywhere after that. Yeah, but there's a theory about that. That wasn't Titanic. That was Olympia, <laughs> but that's for another night. That's, ah. that's... <laughs> ah. next week on the TechNet. Yeah, well, if you if you Google it, or uh, there's a great article on YouTube with photographs and all sorts of stuff, you know, because um, they swap the names on it. But there we go. That's another story. Well, they do that a lot of times. The the aircraft carrier that I served on, they changed its name. Um, we, we started with the, the keel of the um, Saratoga, and they, but by the time they got past the keel, they changed it to um, Forrestal. Hmm. Was that because you were on it? No, they, they, built, it long, they <laughs> built it when I was born. 
uh, and I was 20 something by the time I got on there. Hmm. Yeah, it's a friend of mine who was in the uh, in the British Navy. His boats were sunk. He was sunk four times. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, they were only small, you know, boats, but they. Uh... Was his last name Brown? <laughs> Brown? The unsinkable Molly Brown from. Oh, Virginia. okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's getting late. It's getting late. No, it's, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes mine are like three dimensional. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh... But, but actually, they're no good if you have to explain them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. They probably wasn't any good. That was the problem. I was afraid I was going to ask you to explain my I said smart four smokestacks. <laughs> yeah. I knew that one. Yeah, but yeah, that took a little while to close down. Yeah. Why would that take that? I, I got it now. I felt pretty much on the head. That was the Titanic, right? So yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, I think yeah, it's amazing that's like that our, our, cruise ships, our cruise ships today hold like 10 times more people than the Titanic did. Matter of fact, I, I heard some while back, one, one of the cruise ships, one of these brand new ones just set sail. It The crew on the ship is bigger than what the Titanic held. Yeah, it's the Icon, the new one. My, uh, my eldest son is technical director at uh, Carnival Corporation. They own 12 shipping lines, including P&O and P&O liners and stuff. And they've just launched one, which is uh, it's called the Icon. And it's, um, oh, Ion, sorry, Ion. And it's, uh, its staff is, I thought something like 400 more than the total that uh, you could get on the uh, Titanic. I've actually, if I can find it, I've got a picture. I want to see this piece. Oh, we got some new YouTube subscribers tonight. If there's anyone that has not subscribed to us on YouTube, it does really help us with the algorithm. And we are suffering from major algorithm problems. I will tell you guys, um, I am going to be paying for the TechNet website. It's going to cost me $150. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make it a paid website to try to get some more hits try to get some more people coming in um we've got a great group here uh but it's the same 20 or so people and i'm i'm really wanting to expand this out some more i think we've got some bad mouthing going on out there and different things and i i'm i just i i, I want to do what we can to get some more people in here and to broaden our reach outside of southwest florida um and, I, and I'm just, I'm looking to do that. And here's some of the things you guys can do to help us. Um, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on YouTube. That helps us tremendously to beat the algorithms. You guys got to understand, let's say somebody does a video on crocheting. Anybody can be interested in crocheting. But we're doing a video on ham radio. Only one in a thousand people are interested in ham radio. So... We already have a significantly diminished audience to begin with. So we're going to have to work a little bit harder to get. Uh, if we want to, you know, double our audience in six months, we're going to have to work at it. And I don't, I don't want this to ever be a thousand people. We can only put a hundred people in here and that's all I'm ever wanting. But I want to get up to where we, we've got more reach and we're doing more things. The tour we did at the radio museum last week was awesome. And if I say so myself, the tour of the radio station wasn't so bad either. I want to do more stuff like that, too. I want to look at different things that we can do in different avenues to try to get more people interested in what we're doing. I'll tell you what, I got real discouraged last night. Um, there was a time when I was sitting in there in the dark room. My wife was already asleep. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I don't know why I'm even doing this. I've been doing this net now for a year and three months, and I can't seem to I can't seem to get the numbers to go up. It's unusual. Um, I produce a show at work, 
it's the number one show in Southwest Florida. We get 100,000 people listening a night. Damn. I produced a paranormal research show, and we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of internet viewers every night to our show. So I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around how fickle and finicky and uninterested a lot of the parent, a, a lot of the amateur radio people are out there. I almost said paranormal research people. Uh, the amateur radio people. Um, I last night was the first watch net. I told uh, nine people that were seven people, whatever was on the simplex net. I reminded them right then we're doing this in ten minutes, and yeah. Rick was the only one that showed up. Tune out and everybody, everybody else tuned in. I, what am I doing wrong? I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The Aries team doesn't do anything like what we're doing. But I have a funny feeling we're, there's probably some bad mouthing going on. Um, oh, could be. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It, it was just very strange to me. Uh, I blasted out the email about that. Went out to cars. Went out to CC Flares. Uh, it went out to our all of our three mailing lists. Uh, and I sent it to all the new people that were licensed in the last two years in Southwest Florida. It went out to 400 and something people. And Rick and I were in there. No one was on there. What am I doing wrong? I, what am I, I mean, tell me. I, I'm looking for help. You guys are my, my friends. I'm, I'm How far to... out does that repeater reach? I don't think it's real far. But... I don't mean to be a smart ass, but apparently not far enough. Uh, but it, it doesn't make it down here. I know, I know it doesn't. And honestly, guys, it's not. It's only up like 150 feet. It's not. It's not one of these yeah. 600 feet in the air things like the 685. It's surprisingly good for the height, but yeah, it's no Miami. Yeah, I, I know that. Um, it's not like my brother-in-law can't hit it because one, it's on 440, and two, it's just too far away. Yeah, you can't hit it with his HT because he's only got an HT. Um, and then when he's at home, and then it, it's on 440. So you need you need to link something that gets on two meters. Because the, the next question is, of the 13 of us are here, uh, I'm out of luck because it's <laughs> I'm in Georgia. Uh, so there's 12 of y'all down there. Well, uh, how many we, of y'all have 440? We are. Um, so Eric, can I take it for a minute? I got a few things to say, actually. I was just going to say there's actually several people in here out of the area. Go ahead, Joseph. Um, this is regarding the what you're what you're saying just now, actually. Am I too loud or too quiet? Y'all can hear me okay? You're, you're a little fun. hot, but it's... A little, little hot, but you're okay. I'll back off a little bit here. Um, so the um, I've talked about this repeater a few times before, but I don't think any of y'all were um, ever involved in it. It was over in Miami, and you had to have a... Um, pretty serious setup to get into there and i have that giant directional antenna and the amplifier and everything so that was my thing um that repeater was the 444-325 miami repeater um and it has been shut down permanently really? um that repeater was originally started by w4thm robert um he ran it for a while and then ki4ziv sergio took it over and he overhauled it and it was up on top of the um, panorama tower. So it was, it was a ways up there. It was probably one of the most serious repeater setups I've seen in a long time. And I really liked that system, not only because it was like, you know, had a big footprint, but everybody on there was really like patriotic for the hobby. Um, they were really, you know, into it. They were really active and they, um, they, they were, they were, they liked free speech and everything. And they were just, you know, they were patriotic, they're, but they're a good bunch of guys. They were, really fun to hang out with and um, talk to and everything. So um, that repeater was something that um, really renewed my faith in ham radio and um, really got me back into it after kind of a, a hiatus. Um, so um, it's just kind of sad today to see it go. And the reason it went was because it being in Miami, it being so high and having the kind of people on it that it had the, um, it attracted jammers and these jammers were people who didn't speak English, probably illegal immigrants. Uh, they would buy a $20 bow thing and they would just key down. They'd hit the alarm button or they'd play music. You know, they would just kind of ruin the experience for everybody. Um, and so the jamming was a pretty big issue, but the lease on the uh, spot on the, on the 
tall building uh, was finally expiring. And so Sergio did not want to renew the lease um, just because of all the drama and the, and the jammers and everything. So it's uh, unfortunately met its demise. And um, yeah, it's kind of sad. So that was that bit. Um, and the, the reason, the other reason I brought it up was because I sent a all-star box down to um, W4YXI in Miami. I sent him a box, just a Raspberry Pi with a Baofeng radio in it, uh, wired up to a sound card. And um, with that, you can, I just basically added all-star capability to their repeater, which is like Echolink. It's basically Echolink, but a little better. So that box is now free and I'm going to have it shipped over to Ian and that will probably go on the uh, 775 repeater. So that repeater will soon have internet linked voice over IP capability. So if you in your area have a repeater that is all star capable or even echo link capable, you can use the DTMF commands or you can ask the owner to link up the repeater for you and you will have uh, access. Another option if the RF side of things doesn't work out is I can make you a... Um, a mobile login, or you can use the uh, computer uh, application. There's an application called IAXRPT, and you basically just put in an IP address, um, some other information, and you can log into the node directly over the internet. And that's another option too. If you want to go that route, I can help you set it up. So that repeater, while it doesn't have the greatest footprint, will soon be internet connected, and that will greatly expand the uh, ways it can be used in an emergency. If the internet goes out, yeah, it's just as useless as before. Um, well, not useless, but <laughs> it, uh, you know, for, for the nets and the check-ins and stuff, if y'all, uh, you know, want to try that out, it will be there soon. So that's pretty much all I got to say. All right. I, uh, and I'm looking forward to getting that going. And with that, there may be the possibility later. I'm I'm interested in talking to somebody down on the south end, North Naples or Benita, someone down there. We've got other repeaters. Now, I want to explain why we're on 440, first of all. Um, I mentioned a while back to our emergency coordinator here in Lee County that I wanted to do some, some different things. And basically, I was told that the, the two-meter stuff's all used by Aries. And so I'm really trying hard not to, I'm treading lightly, let me just put it that way. I'm trying very hard to not be somewhere uh, where I'm going to be a nuisance. I, I want to provide help without being a nuisance or a problem. So uh, this repeater is right here. No one ever uses it. Joseph and I started monitoring this, and for 30 days, we were the only two people that spoke on it. Um, mm. We actually, I set up a recorder that only recorded when someone was speaking, okay? And I had three hours and 12 minutes of legal ID going beep, 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 because that's all it was, was hours and hours and hours of just the beeper going off. No one uses it. So that's why I'm using it. I'm using it only because no one else is using it. We're not even exactly sure. You know, I know that the co-op uh, puts it there. I know that that transmitter is a backup for them in case something happens during a disaster to one of their main, uh, their, their uh, trouble guys, the, the guys that go out and run and fix the lines for us. They run on, on, on UHF. You can actually go look their frequencies up and listen to them. Uh, I have them programmed receive only into several of my radios so that I can listen to them after, uh, after a storm or during a storm. But that's their backup transmitter, and it's being left for us to use so that it's being used. For some reason, equipment seems to last better when it's hooked up and running. Um, and uh, so that's why I chose that one. I would love to find someone in the south part that has another tower down there that we could link to during something, that we could actually link up and just use one net controller for two towers. That would be great. Um, I would love to put that together. I, I would need someone to work with me on that. Um, like I said, we've got the all-star node already on the way now. With that, we can link repeaters. We don't even have to go to tower sites to link repeaters anymore. Um, there's going to be a bit of a delay. A second, we got to 
Yeah, there's some. There's it's like it's it's no system. different than talking on a trunk system or talking even on DMR. Uh, you have you have that one second, and then you talk. If you're used to that, you can use this. It's no big deal. Um, so I'm I'm looking to expand our footprint both on the internet and also with another repeater. I'd like to eventually even find another repeater and then find a way that I can get to that repeater from here so that I can run the link from here. Um, don't forget, I'm also broadcasting what we do over YouTube and broadcastify so if you're out of the area and there's storms hitting you can monitor us from out of the area too so there's going to be a lot there's a lot going on here there's a lot of things turning i've actually redesigned where some of my computers are going to be and stuff based on what i need to do when this activates um when i first started i was putting all this energy into tech net tech that tech, tech team tech team tech team tech that okay and I put a bunch of effort into the tech team and I can't really find a bunch of people that are that interested. So I'm just going to keep going with it. I'm going to keep moving slowly with it. And as I find people that are interested, we're going to do things with it. You know, I got it. Four or five of you guys are signed up there and we're eventually going to, going to do stuff when we get some, some enough people interested. But that being said, the watch net is this to me seems like more of something that I want to put as a priority because this is something that we need to get out right away. You know, every time there's a storm that comes into Charlotte County, uh, Dwayne and those guys up at CC Flares, uh, K4 FHP and all those guys up there, they're on the radio. They're talking to each other through the whole storm. How's it up there? What's going on over there? Oh, I got bad winds over here. Okay, cool. Let's sign in. Is everybody okay? We don't have that here. They do it in Sarasota. They do it with the NI4CE system in Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Clearwater. Okay? So this is something that's done all over the state. It's called Skywarn. Okay? And it's basically amateur radio people that are monitoring and giving out information. When you're on there, you'll be able to hear us giving out the bulletins as they come in. You'll hear the, the reports from the other ham radio operators. And people that are out of the area can hear what's going on by monitoring it. It's something that's not being provided at all right now. And our Aries team does not activate till later on. They, you know, they, they go to the shelters and they hook up radios so that they can do post storm communications. And that's great. That's not what we're doing. We're doing pre during and post storm communications just between hams. And, and if necessary, to the National Weather Service in Ruskin through the Skywarn system. That's what we're doing. We're not doing the Aries thing. Um, not reporting shelter numbers. As a matter of fact, if someone calls me and says, hey, I need you to call Aries, I'll give them the frequency and have them call direct. Yeah. Um, I really don't even want to get in the business of relaying their messages unless we need to because that person doesn't have direct contact. Okay. Uh, does anybody have anything else on that? Any suggestions? Anything? Yeah, one other crazy idea. Okay. Since you're putting a link on that 444-775, wonder if there'd be a repeater up in Huntsville that would be willing to join us, too. Well, and I got, yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. I'll have, um, well, yeah, up here, I'm actually going to have the, another node. It, I already have it set up and everything. So I will have like a little mini repeater up here and then I can just set my radio here to the frequency of a local repeater and then boom, now that repeater is connected. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, I, I picture a day with this technology the way it is where each town has a Skywarn system like this where we've already kind of got this going in all these towns. But now we can interconnect it. I mean, could you could you imagine if like we had like up in Charlotte County when they go Skywarn, they connect WX4E VHF, WX4E UHF, which are normally connected. They have um, All Star, they have Echo Link, but they also patch into the K8ONV repeater, and they also patch into the other one up in Inglewood. So they patch their whole county into this thing. And so that's another thing I want to look towards is patching in other repeaters so that we can bring more people into it. Um, 
But like with everything else in the world, you have to start from where you're at. So right. that's what I'm doing. Anything else? All right. Um, hopefully we can get a few more people in this next week. I'm going to send out a reminder again, and uh, it won't be blast to everybody again, but at least to our email lists. Um, I have huge lists of emails, but I'm very cautious about how I use that. I only send out like, I've only sent out like two things so far during using that. Uh, most of what I send out is uh, just our mailing list, which is between our three mailing lists, um, not including anything else. It's like 100, over 100 people right there. And then when you when you add in, and that's only people that have asked to be on our mailing list. And then, of course, we have a couple of groups that send our stuff out, too. So it all, it all gets out there, and we really appreciate it. Um, all right. And the, the – uh, somebody have something else? All right, I'm going to open it up at this point. Uh, there was there anybody else out there that has a, uh, an issue they're having or something that we can help you with? Um, I'd like to go back. Maybe first we could revisit that uh, um, grid tracker not starting issue. I've never had a problem with my grid tracker not starting. Um, you said it's a Windows. Uh, who, who was having that problem? Was that Ken? Yeah, that's me. It's uh, I can download the program, but I, it won't open. And you're on Windows what four or something? No, Windows seven. <laughs> Is there oh. a Windows four? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I, was I, heard I, you I think Windows four was like was was uh, ninety five was technically Windows four. Three, three one for work Windows group. three one one for work groups was when they quit using the numbers. That was the last one. Windows, Boy, I, was a, I was a whiz on three one one for work groups, man. So <laughs> when you when you try to run Grid Tracker, what happens when you when you Run gridtracker.exe, what happens? Okay, I downloaded the program. I have an icon on the desktop. I click on it and it says, do you want to allow the program, blah, 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 gridtracker.exe. I say yes. And I get the little hourglass and nothing happens. Did you try rebooting the computer? I have several times. Okay. But well, I'm hmm. sorry, so, uh, guy. I don't mean to interrupt, and I I just zoned out for a second there. Is it the installer that's not running, or you install the program and then the program doesn't run? Uh, the latter. Okay, so you you ran so the installer. The program does, and you, comes up and stops, freezes, or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't. It's just not. It just won't open. You know, and I've done it. I've installed it on, uh, I have another laptop that's Windows 10 and it's fine. And I could go to that, but I was, well, I was should... told I might be better off with the Windows 7 to run my ham stuff yeah. right now it, because it of the updates and all that. So go ahead. It should work on, on 7 just fine. Um, yeah. The problem is we don't know what the error is because nothing is popping up. So uh I'm trying to think if there's a way to start it like on linux you can run any program through the terminal and get that log that output so you might be able to run it through the command line and then get some feedback and it'll actually give you information on on the problem but let me let me let me look for a second here or if the program puts out a log of some kind that's a um I've been, work, I've been working I've been working FT8 on 20 meters since we've been on here and I got Brazil and Canada and Idaho so that's all working well the cat controls working but um, um, I'm thinking grid track you know help me understand that grid tracker is gonna be the kind of the hub to get me into the whole logging well, you it, it, look at it this way. WSJTX will go ahead. It will actually create a log for you called an ADI file, and it will populate that log with all your contacts. And where is that at? How do I see? You know how to okay, find that? Find that. Yep. It's very easy. You go to the file on top of your WSJTX file, locate ADI file. It should be right above settings. You think maybe it's been trying to create that, and when yeah. it does, it runs into a problem, and that's when it quits? 
Well, it still should load, and it would give you an error that it can't find the ADI file. Yeah. But see, yeah, yeah, it'll say open log directory. It's right above settings in under yeah. file. File. Just. And, yeah, and I got right. open, and then open next in directory. No, no, yeah, it should say open log directory. It's right above settings. Oh, sorry, there it is. Click that, and it should bring up a file screen. Yep. And, and you'll see right there, uh, you'll see uh, uh, WSJTX, what is it, dot log? I guess that's it. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a file underscore log, log at the top. Yeah, there it is. It's uh, WSJTX underscore log dash ADI. I see that. That's your actual log file. Now, that's all WSJTX is going to do for you right there. It says Windows can't open this file. Yeah, it can't because it doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, so WSJTX will put your new log entries into that file automatically, but that's all it does. It doesn't send it anywhere. It doesn't do anything with it. It doesn't graphically show you anything. That's all done by Grid Tracker. Right. Grid Tracker is like a companion. Now, what Grid Tracker will do is monitor that file. And every time a new uh, entry pops into that file, it will then send it to a logbook of the world, logbook of the old man, ham radio deluxe, if you're that unfortunate. Um, it'll send it to wherever you need to send it to. Um, and and that that's a great thing. I Mine sends it to uh, e EQSL. Uh, it sends it to QRZ. And it sends it to Logbook of the World automatically. That's how I got mine set up. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with those screens, you know, setting that up in Grid Tracker and all that. Yeah. Right now, the only thing I'm using is N1MM manually because I didn't know about this, but. Right. That's yeah, fine this, for nothing. Yeah, this, I'm telling you, this, when you get the WSJTX hooked up and then the uh, Grid Tracker. Once we can get that to load, it should it should work right on there. I mean, I, there's not usually an issue. I've never had an issue getting it to work um, with my WSJTX. Uh, if it doesn't communicate right away, you just Google it. There's one little setting in there you can click, you can tick, and it will start communicating. Uh, but now, I forget how, what that is. How it populates it is through the the audio setting in uh, WSJTX, correct? That uh, Save directory, A Z E L directory. Is that is that how it communicates to Grid Tracker? No. If you go to settings, and then go to reporting. Okay. Uh, that UDP server. That's how it communicates with Grid Tracker. Oh, the one twenty seven point zero point zero point one. Yeah, yeah. It's an IP and address. It, that's how it does it. And I have all of those checked, except notify, accepted. Um, and I don't I have always, a set. Well, ahead. I don't. I don't have any of those checked. Any of those three. Um, I have enable PSK reporter checked because I like to send my data to them because uh, I use the PSK reporter. But below that, where it says UDP server, I don't have anything checked. All I have is the. Uh, the uh, IP address and then the server port is 2237. How about the uh, use TCP slash IP connection? Just above that. Um, I don't have that checked either. And how about secondary? Do you have anything there? It's the same uh, address. Yeah, mine is checked and everything is the same except the server port is 2333. Right, I see that. Okay. Yeah, so set that one the same as the top one, except port 2333. Try that. How about logging? Which ones are checked in that first box? Um, I've got log automatically checked, but that generally only works when you're contesting. Um, and then uh, uh, clear DX call and grid after logging. If you click that, it helps it to reset each time and, and, and start fresh again. Right. Um, Prompt I, I me to log. Prompt me to log is unchecked. 
Uh, yeah, prompt me to log Q. So that happens automatically. You don't need to check that. Um, okay. Does it have a debug mode? Uh -huh. words, you you invoke the thing on the command line and tell it debug, and it comes up and gives you all kinds of output. Oh, really? I haven't done that. I you mean right click on the icon? That would depend on the program. You oh, you're talking, to, about, you're talking about his loading problem? Yeah. Uh, it has troubleshoot compatibility. I tried you can that. Try that. You can try that, but that's not very robust. Yeah, not much to that. That's basically yeah. just Bill Gates making you think he's trying. And then it says try recommended or troubleshoot the program. You can try recommended. I, it's already Windows 7. What compatibility would it need? It runs in 10. So you, you, you technically wouldn't need any compatibility. That's the yeah, there's some little glitch here that I can't get past, but we can, we can go on. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Nobody's, you know, I'm, I'm operating here. So the sad, sad part is I, I'm getting a, a 6 BTV tomorrow used one from a ham in in central florida but i'm gonna have to move at the end of the month so oh, no. uh, and i hope i can find a place where i can set up set up shop again yeah the blessings of being a renter yeah i'm glad i'm not anymore well i'll be honest i mean i i don't i, I don't have a taj mahal i i have just a little place and a little lot but my wife and I own it outright. Yeah. And um, it's, it, you know, the county doesn't think it's worth a whole lot. So my taxes were a hundred bucks last year. Wow, that's and my, awesome. And I paid I 260 I for garbage, I think. It was like 300 bucks for, for the tax bill. Uh, so, you know, it's one of the things I, I'd rather, I, I'd rather have something I own. I, I'm weird about it. I, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I nice thing about owning is that nobody can raise the rent on you. That's true. But yeah, every, that, time, every time something breaks, guess who's the handyman? Yeah. I, just, uh, I came cool. home last night, two nights ago to my water pump not working. Uh, about a week ago, uh, one of one whole part of my house, the power quit working. And I literally cannot get the power working. I've got to go under my house and figure out what's wrong. So... I went and bought some Romex and built two four gang boxes and ran them into the bedrooms and then said, have fun. There's your power. I'll fix this when I get good and damn ready. There you go. <laughs> well, my, um, the train has left the station for me to buy at this point, but um, yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'll be able to find something. It's just. Well, and that's it for me. If it was right now, I wouldn't buy anything. I couldn't afford anything right now. Yeah. Uh, luckily, yeah. Uh, my wife has owned this place for a while and uh, I married into it and between what I had and what she had we were able to pay off everything and um, yeah that's awesome I, yeah. I would rather not have a lot that's mine <laughs> but I also there's something to definitely be said I mean I'll admit that being a renter is great I was a renter for years fridge is broke hey fridge is broke yeah. Yeah. Fridge is broke. You know. out. Bring me exactly. Room. I love yeah, I'm that. in Northport and it's on a well, you know, and they, if there's problems yep. with the well and there has been, yep. you know, tanks rust away and yep. all that stuff. And yeah, it's been a blessing for sure. And I, I always bitch about HOAs. Um, you know, I, I know that HOAs started right after World War II because the Nazis needed something to do. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> they they tried to outlaw HOAs in the Geneva Convention, um, but it didn't work. Um, but I, yeah, I hate HOAs. Truth is, though, you signed the paper when you went in. I signed one when I went in the mine, except the difference was when I moved in the mine, it was all plumbers and electricians that lived there. And over the next 10 years, it was bought out by a bunch of older folks that came down from up north. And next thing you know, they didn't want all our plumbing trucks and electrical trucks and, well, assistant fire chief vehicles in the community anymore and it was a big mess and we ended up going to court in a whole bit um but i hate homeowners associations um hey I, I this is a, I, I don't know if we have i don't know if we have any females but this is a this is a thing that 
that touches all elderly men. My, my PSA over the last two months, if you know anything about PSA numbers, usually it's between zero and, you know, 10 is like <laughs> rip it out or whatever. Mine was uh, started out at 120, went over 200, went up to 400. The last one was over 600. Oh my God. And, and, yeah, I'm like, but no symptoms or, you know, no, no problems beyond being a 70 year old man. Was the and, test uh, made was, in China? What's that? <laughs> was the test you took made in China? Well, I, you know, I doubt I'm just I, guessing it was a shot in the dark. Yeah, I um, I asked them, you know, wasn't there supposed to be a decimal point somewhere in there? And uh, so anyway, I got a, I got to uh, go to Moffitt the last month or so. And uh, I went there this week after being on a treatment, just a pill or whatever. And it went from over 600 to 1.76. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, it's, it's just amazing. And what, what they're doing is this pill, it reduces the testosterone. In a wow. sense, it chemi it chemically castrates you. Hmm. And that no, supposedly it, it, that takes away the fuel of the, ca you know, cancer or whatever. I think there's still cancer. I think they said it's metastasized to the bone. But it's obviously treatable at the moment. That's right. And every day they're doing more and more stuff with it, too. Yeah. So I just throw that out. If you ever get a 600 number, say, yeah, I knew, I knew somebody who had one of those and he lived. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. My, my, uh, my mother's a cancer survivor. And I'm so worried. It's 76. I'm worried. It's like I keep on her. I'm like, shouldn't you have already gone and gotten tested again? You know, it's like. I don't know. It was, it just worries me to death that, uh, I don't know. My dad died of cancer. So, yeah, well, it's, uh, um, the, as a pilot, they used to say, you know, you're either, it's not a question if you're going to land gear up, it's a question of when it's not, if it's when, Yeah. and cancer, cancer is like, it's not, it's not if it's when most likely, especially with men and prostate problems and stuff. So anyway. Yeah. Well, I've said for years, we all make it all the way to the crash site. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's move on. We're good. Yeah. Well, I, good luck. And I'm glad you're here with us and, uh, yeah, and hopefully for a very long time. Um, yeah, I at 51, my health has gone to crap in a handbasket in the last 10 years. It's amazing how uh, it's amazing the nosedive it takes, especially when you're someone like me that never really took care of himself to begin with. Uh, it's it's a pronounced nosedive. And um, I'm at the point now where I have to give up soda. And I'm just having a real hard time with that. Um, I am having a real hard time with the fact that water tastes like shit. Um Oh, me too. Everybody's always like, oh, drink water. I drink water. I drink water. Like, what kind of water are you drinking? Because I've tried bottled water, city water, pond water. I've tried everything but toilet water. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, it's all shit. Wow. So water. I don't know what you're I don't know what you're drinking out there, but it's not the same water I'm drinking. Okay. Anyway. I add stuff to it. Yeah, but then it's not water. Well, that's what I try to explain. You know, I, it, it really pisses me off when someone says, you shouldn't drink all that Mountain Dew. You should drink water. Did you know that Mountain Dew is 97.35% water? Yeah. So get yeah. off my ass over 2.5%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the ret that 2.5%, nothing of that is actually grown. See, you're starting it's to all sound like them again. You're starting it's to all like pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Yeah, or minerals. No, I don't think there's any minerals in it. It's all pharmaceuticals. Well, when I said minerals, I meant bad minerals, not good minerals. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, yeah, just... all right, enough of that. Anybody have anything else we can help you with tonight? What do we got going on out there? It's 941 Eastern Time. <laughs> oh, I think wow. we're supposed to change the damn time next week. Is it next week? 
Yeah, I think it is. Oh, that's fun. You know, I, I'm I'm going to protest that. I'm not going to do it this year. <laughs> I'm going to st- I'm going to stay on this time. No, we want to stay on say, the summer one. No, leave, leave it until the fall and stay on the summer one. That's I a see, lot better. This is a good discussion. We disagree. <laughs> we disagree now we can have a controversy. <laughs> Here's a controversy. <laughs> doesn't involve Joe Biden or Ukraine. Uh, you sure? Or China. Well, I am here. Everybody, everybody, including Marco Rubio, uh, wants to change it to daylight savings time and then leave it there. Yes. And I, I'm the first one that would say that sounds great. Sounds awesome. Not feasible. And I'll tell you why. There's two reasons why it's not feasible. Number one, if we did that, we'd be the only state, uh, only state in the Eastern time zone on that time zone. It would, it would totally confuse everything. What we need to do is get everybody on standard time. If we were all on standard time, then it would be standardized across the country. And again, leave like it the hell away. And leave it alone. Number two, and and I agree with you, daylight savings time seems a lot better. It does. But here's the problem. We lost a bunch of kids dying in crashes in the morning waiting for buses. That's right. If we move to permanent daylight savings time, we go from one third of our kids waiting in the dark to all of them waiting in the dark. That's right. And I'm just not sure because literally on December, whatever, during the uh, uh, the, the winter solstice, Jesus. the longest day, uh, December 21st, longest whatever night. it is, um, even the high, at high school, middle school, elementary school, they'll all be standing in the complete darkness because the sun won't rise till 840. Hmm. So I'm just I'm putting it out there. I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just my opinion is that we need to be standardized with the world on standard time. And yeah, number two, standard. we need to keep those kids out of the dark in the morning. Yeah, that's my. What do you guys think? He, Tell me. Even Vladimir Putin got rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I agree. It needs to go. I think we all agree it needs to go. Yeah. My my only thing is is I'm just very concerned about going to daylight savings time because now we're going to be out of sync with everybody in the central and kind of out of sync with everybody in the eastern too half the time and it's just going to be a real a real conundrum there. You're, now, you're granted, Elijah. computers make it a lot easier than it used to be, but still. You realize that if Florida went by itself to all the time in daylight saving time, that Pensacola would be two hours different from Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's little things like that where we we kind of got we, we need to think about it a little bit. I would love to go to all the time daylight savings time. I I love when I come home at eight o'clock and I'm driving home and the sun's still going down over the river, over yeah. off the Edison Bridge. I love that. Um, but I'm worried about kids in the morning, and I've never had kids. I got one grandkid that I married into. I don't have kids. But I'm worried about all them kids. We the little girl, uh, uh, Layla, uh, died two yeah, blocks yeah. from two blocks from my house. The other one died over in North Cape. Those are the two most recent ones. There was another one that was hit. Uh, at least another, one other one that was hit. Uh, was another one uh, that died out off of Durrance Road. So. And every one of these was kids walking to the bus stop before it got light out. So that's my only thing, guys. I We have to really, as a society, sit down and figure out. We definitely need to stop changing time twice a year. We just got to yeah. figure out where the proper time Stupid, is. Yeah. Two this on the so. show. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've done, we did this on the, our talk show on the, the Drive with Trey Radel. We've done this several times. Definitely needs to stop changing. Though. I agree with that. Well, we could go progressive and then do it every other month. Yeah, uh, I got. Well, that slowed a, it all down. <laughs> I have an even more radical solution. Set all the damn clocks to UTC and the hell with it. Yeah, I I have resolved this issue for myself. I had open heart surgery in June of 2020. 
And uh, my heart was stopped for an hour. So I'm officially on Central Standard Time now. Well, there you go. That's cool. Yeah. I recommend, I highly recommend it for everyone. But do you have to change your time zone twice a year? (laughs) Well, you know, Indiana, Indiana, they, uh, half of their state is on one and half is on the other. But so, so is Florida. Yeah, so is Florida. That's true. And so is Kentucky. Central time. Yeah. yeah, and Kentucky. I think the airline industry is uh, too big a lobby. There won't be any changes. No, no, because Arizona doesn't change its time. Yeah. Now, Arizona guys, is fixed. You want to hear something really messed up? I think we should all go to Zulu time. I think the no, entire world saying. should go to standard time, yeah. to, was, to Greenwich Mean Time. And I Zulu, think that... Yeah. If, if, okay, it gets dark. It gets dark at two o'clock here. It gets dark at three o'clock over there. It gets dark at four o'clock over there. To me, it's easier. We're all in the same time zone. Two o'clock here is two o'clock in Moscow. What's the difference? Yeah. And now we don't have any of this bull crap. We get rid of the AM, PM, the a- a- anti-meridian, post-meridian bullshit. We get rid of all that. And we, we literally just go, boom, one time zone, the whole world. One time zone, okay, and it's on twenty-four hour clock. So yeah. we literally, okay. So it could start here at twenty-one thirty. No, if we're going to do that, we should go metric. No, only have only have ten hours in a day. No, 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 no. no. no I, and a hundred minutes in each of those ten hours. Yeah, that's right. Or you know, or a hundred hours in the day. Please don't hundreds. get me started on metrics. <laughs> when, I, when I was in grade school, when I was in elementary school, there was this big push by the liberal left to uh, uh, to force metrics on everybody. And they came into our schools and they brought in teachers to teach us metrics because our own teachers didn't know it. And they literally came in and they tried to beat us up for years. Every year we had two weeks of this training where we were trying to learn metrics. And you know what they learned? It was easier just to teach the people that come here the standard, the imperial system, because uh, it it wasn't going to work. They actually came out with a study that people were unaccepting of two measurement standards. Literally unaccepted of it. Once you've learned one, you're unaccepted of another. And, And they literally quit teaching it here as much as it is a better system. I'll agree. I'll agree. I don't want to switch to it. But it's a much more it's a much better system it's smart it's intelligent as hell and uh and there's only three countries that don't use it yeah but none of the yeah but they're the only ones that count i think (laughs) i think a few people might argue with that (laughs) (laughs) i was i was waiting for the rebuttal um but uh, (laughs) Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like I like that uh, uh, the, the metric system as far as it is a system, um, but it's it's so different than what we use that uh, I don't think you'll ever find it catching on here. I really don't. They've made three big attempts: one before I was in school, one while I was in school, and one since I've been out of school to switch to the metric system. There was even a sweep. Uh, they tried in the uh, fire service. There was some stuff that started coming out and they were trying, they were telling us how it's much better to calculate all our flow rates on liters. It's much better to calculate everything on liters, calculate everything on meters of hose, liters of water. We told them to get the hell out of the station right now. So anyway. Well, you you know, it's only the construction industry that still uses standard. All the other industries use uh, metric. The the, The whole of the automobile industry is now totally metric yes I electronics have been metric since the word go yep money money is metric yes so you know it'll happen yep. we're getting there um i you know i even even um fahrenheit versus celsius uh celsius is much better i mean zero is freezing 100 yep. is boiling that's pretty yep. simple the yep. only thing i don't like about celsius is without using a decimal you do not get as accurate as a reading because there's less numbers in the range. That's yeah. not really a big deal though. Most metric temperatures are giving in points, 1.6, um, where 
for us it would be 35 degrees or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah you would still get that same amount of detail. It's just given in a decimal. Um, but anyway, I uh, yeah, like I said, a metric is one of those things where I like it. I don't want nothing to do with it. So it is what it is, unfortunately. Americans are stubborn bastards uh, with stuff like that. I'll admit it. And it, it sucks, but... I doubt they'll ever get it to go. They've tried three times. All right, what's next? Anybody have anything else they want to discuss? We've done daylight savings, the metric system, a hex beam antenna, an any tone radio, um, a, a uh, almost failed watch net, and, uh, Ukraine uh, and... Uh, the Ukraine. Um, we, we talked. We talked as much as we could about everything without getting political. It lasted 36 seconds. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, when I go to CQ um, on FT8, I look down after about six or seven transmissions and it says run away. Is that because I'm exceeding the number of times yeah. you should call CQ? You can uh, set that by going to your settings. Uh, you can set that. And what that does is it prevents your rig from from transmitting over and over and over and over and over and just continuously doing it. Um, and you can set that for however many minutes that you want it set for. Um, I believe it's under... It's general. It's under the first, very first uh, yep. drop down on general right at the bottom corner. I do three... Drug. Yeah, TX Watchdog. I do three minutes because it's it's kind of rude to to keep you know banging away at people. So I put it at uh, yeah. It was uh, it was defaulted to six, so I moved it to three. That's great. Yeah, that's what everybody. Well, not everybody, but that's what a lot of people do. Six is the standard. But the thing is, that will also if you're chasing somebody, that will also stop. So if you're you know, if you if you double click on somebody on the left hand side, they'll drop over to the right hand side, and you will keep calling him every fifteen seconds for six minutes, and that's <laughs> that's just a bit rude. So I drop it to three minutes, yeah, I, and I think actually, most people I, I, do that. Yeah, I had mine set for three. I've actually bumped it down to two. Yeah, uh, I'm trying a new thing now where um, I'm going in, and the moment I see somebody I want, I hit it. And I call them just like once or twice, and then I go right to the next one. And I just keep working it that way. I used to work one person and try to get them and try to get them and try. And now I'm, I'm being a little more like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it to you twice. If you don't hear me, I'm going to go to the next guy because I got 50 people on here. And well, what, I'm well, actually I, finding that working better. What I do is I'll do three or four calls, and then I'll move the transmit frequency. Just yep. in case he can't hear me because there's somebody louder closer to him or, you know, the skip is hitting him from somewhere else. So I give him a double, a double dose, if you like, on two different frequencies. And then it's amazing because sometimes, you know, a minute or two minutes can go by and then all of a sudden he's calling you because he's got three yep. or four other people and they show red on his side of the screen. So he knows you've been calling him and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how often they... They kind of come back. I've had them come back five, six, seven minutes later and oh, call wow. me back. And, and I'm like, wow. Uh, I was calling him a while. I had to go back up in my log. Was I calling him? Now, and, so, and that's another thing. A lot of people, I know you do this. A lot of people just call me out of the blue. I, I'm calling other people and people call me. I never called CQ, but they're calling me, which is what? cool. I answer them back right away when they do. Yeah, I, I do that a lot. I probably do that. I call CQ quite a bit on, on FT8, but I do, you know, hunt down the left-hand side there, mm -hmm. see see who's, uh, if they're a square I want or a call sign I like the look of or obviously a country that I need. I do that quite a bit because it keeps the, you know, the interest level up a little bit as well. doesn't get so so boring. But, uh, you know, this weekend, of course, we've got the SSB competition, so that should bring life back to the to the bands above uh, above the bottom bit. Hopefully, yeah, there we go.
we go. What what bands would that work on? Probably eighty through ten. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I actually got one sixty as well. I may have one sixty. Let yeah, me no. just. I'll look at it. Up. I'll look it up. I'm having a real problem. I uh, I moved some wires around behind my radio, and now every time I go to forty or eighty, if I go above forty watts, um, my my sound card resets or something, and it I'm getting R I'm getting RF in here. So getting R yeah, RFI that sounds like. What I'm going to have to do is I need to get everything in the back. I've got everything coming in. And I went through now twice and have moved a bunch of stuff around. And the wires have got to where they're not all straight coming into where they're going. They're starting to wrap around. So what I need to do is pull everything out, straighten all my wires, feed all the extra wire away, and get everything to where it's hooked back up again. If that doesn't fix it, I've already got ferrite traps on everything for that. I got these big ferrite traps, and I've got it wrapped around there. And... Um, and, and still, I'm still getting this. So if that's if that doesn't work, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a roll of tin foil and I'm gonna tin foil my uh, antenna wires. I don't care. I'm just gonna tin foil them. Yes, yeah, one sixty through ten. Yeah. What? That's the SSB competition at the weekend. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just yeah, looking I, up the rules. All right. Yeah, I was. Uh, I've got I've already the, um, started. Yeah, no, we'll, starts we'll, tomorrow. Oh, it starts tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, begin zero 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 UTC Saturday. Start Saturday. <laughs> here you rated R. Okay. Um. Yeah. There we go. There. Can you guys see that? Is that up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. The 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 newsletter. There was just a few things I wanted to tell you guys about. Um. There's a neat article in here about orange auroras. Believe it or not, they, they, they actually produce orange auroras. It's pretty cool. Um, and the solar flux, let's see where we're at right now. Let me take a peek. Uh, up to 113, so it's slowly rising. The K's up to 3, though, unfortunately, which means uh, we've gone unsettled. That's um, a killer. We, we really like when this is quiet. We really like when this is between a 0 and a 2. We're up to a 3 now, and uh, we're up to unsettled over here. And uh, that, that'll begin to close things off. So that, that kind of sucks. Uh, terrestrial weather. Uh, we got record heat coming uh, Sunday, 90 degrees. Yeah. So um, as Al Gore would say, the warming is causing the cooling. Um, let's see here. Uh, something new to try. I've told you guys about this before, but just to remind you guys, um, the uh, custom call sign graphic generator is a really cool tool to use. It's uh, flamingtext.com. And um, I see a few people writing it down. So hopefully you guys will get some use out of it. It is very easy to use. There's nothing to install and it's completely free. Uh, I made all of those right there myself. Notice when you when you flip through my, my uh, thing here, all of these titles that you see, I made all of these titles on that program every one of these titles that you see so uh it's a really cool program i use it for a lot of things even like this there's actually a world background that you can put behind your letter so uh it works really well um i can even show you real quick i don't want to take a lot of time with it but uh flaming text you go in you type whatever you want to do here um Type your call sign in, or if you want, you can type Ken's call sign in like I did. Huh. How cool is he? He's got JFK in his call sign. Yeah. JFK was the last Democrat I liked. Anyway, um, let's see here. Uh, you can just, you base, you guys didn't hear that. Just ignore that. He um, was a Democrat? Yeah, he was a Democrat. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say one more thing. I can't help it. <laughs> My brother will be on. If he was alive today, he'd be a Republican. Yes. Okay. Uh, the preceding comments. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Um, you just you pick the one you want. Like if you like this one, you pick it, and then it gives you a chance to go and pick 
something that's even closer to what you want. So it gives you one that's kind of in the same style. And then you can pick one that's even closer to what you want. Then when you finally get the one that's really close to what you want, okay, you can come to this. It goes to this screen automatically uh, once you click on it. And then from here, you can completely change this thing to anything you want. I just want to show you real quick. You can actually change the color and the bottom color. See, like if you want the bottom to be darker, like say what the bottom be purple, you can you can basically change it to whatever you want, and it will change the letters to, to match that. You can also do the shadow. Notice there's a shadow behind it. You can drop it. You can do a reflective shadow. Uh, you can do a glowing <laughs> shadow. Can you change the font of the four? So the font size you can you cannot change specific fonts of a specific letter but you can change the font of your call sign all day long all you would do is go back to text and you would change it here okay. this is the size and this is all the different fonts there's thousands of okay. them here it's just because of the the zero four i've having the four at a little different font size makes it more but well, That's there's just... a bunch of them in here like that. The one I use puts the four in a lower font. It's the same size, but it's like a little lower than the numbers. Oh, yeah. yeah, That's OCD, I, I know, but... <laughs> but yeah, you just have to go through and pick That's... the one that gives you the look that you're looking for. If you like the Coca-Cola look. Uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there. Uh, but uh, there's uh, a million different ones like Harry Potter. Um. But once you pick the one you want, I suggest strongly um, to do a drop shadow and background transparent. Anytime mm -hmm. you see that in the background, the background won't show up once you save it. That's right. So and you can you put get, what you you want get it there. the way you want it. You can put a pattern in the background. Look at all the patterns they've got to choose from. I mean, you can put whatever kind of pattern huh. you want. I mean, they literally. This is better than the game. Oh, this is. <coughs> and you can put whatever kind of background you want. And then once you figure that out, like I said, I actually prefer the transparent background. But let's say uh, we'll go back to the logo here. Why is it not giving me more colors? Let me try something here. I want to go back to here. Try a different one. Edit logo. All right, so let's try this one here. Okay, now when you go to logo, look at this. It gives you colors. You can put it, make it any color you want, any imaginable color that you want, okay? Or you can do a pattern. Check this out. You can use those same patterns inside the letters. Like let's say you want it to look like water or whatever. There's a bunch of different categories. There's different ones to make it look like whatever you want to make it look like. Oh. Isn't that pretty cool? Now, there's also the outline. The outline, oh, also there's gradient too. You can do gradients. Gradients are great. Like if you want like a gold look, like a metallic look, look at this. It gives you like a, a metallic look. You can do a, a like a silver fade. There's different uh, different ones to give you the. You can do some of these where on a clear background, you know, you can actually see the background through it. Um, I use this one quite a bit for different stuff. It's kind of a cool color. You could have the Ukrainian flag. Yeah, you could probably find it in here. Then you save it as an image file or. Yep, when you're all done, once you get your your, your uh, inside, your outline, your outline two, everything is customizable. Once you get the logo to where you want it, and you're all done with the shadow, the background, the image, everything's done, you click the next button. Once you do that, you just right-click save. Save image. And you save it right into your hard drive. Cool. That's all there is to it. So everybody should have really cool graphics tomorrow on your QRZ page. <laughs> now, if you really want to do something cool, I'm going to show you guys, if you want to hang around, this is the late show bonus coming up. Are you ready? Here we go. It's called Lunapic. I love this website. 
I want to have this website's babies. This is my favorite website. Um, you go to this website, you upload a picture. This website will do anything. It's literally Photoshop in a can. It'll do anything that you can do on Photoshop right online. And they just added a bunch of new tools that I want to show you one of these new tools. So let's go and let's find a, um, let me upload a picture here. I don't know, uh, let me find a picture to upload here. I got all my clients' pictures in here, so I don't want to put them on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's find a picture here. Uh, let's take this one here. Um, all right, I'm uploading a picture. All right, here's a picture of me, right? It work. Okay. Now I'm gonna take that picture, and I'm, I, you're, you guys are gonna shit when you see this. All right, you ready? I'm gonna go up here to. I just, I think it is, let me find it, hold on. Auto background removal. Yeah, you're probably not going to believe this. Oh, it messed up my head. But look, that's pretty close. Yeah. Um, yeah. It actually, you can put a picture of yourself in there. And it will remove the background right out of the picture. It's it's uh, it's amazing. I actually did this um, with my. Uh, I'll show you guys. See my picture here on my email. Yeah. I took that picture you just saw and I cut it out. Okay. Once I cut it out, then I just took it and copied it to my clipboard, pulled up an image of the patch and pasted it on top. It yeah. took me two minutes. Yeah. Um, it's very easy to do stuff like that um, in Lunapic. And I'm trying, I, I want to find something else, another project here I can load up real quick and show you. Yeah. Let me take a quick peek. Just give me a second. All right. Here. Okay, so you got an image that you want to take, and let's say you want to take the person uh, out of the image. So what we're going to do is I'm going to save an image here. Uh, I'm just going to pick an image of just somebody. Um, it doesn't matter who, right? Okay, so now I'm going to open, I'm going to upload that image to the, to the editor, okay? Doing that. Go to download. Okay. Now I pull up some picture of some random person, right? <laughs> I don't know who that is. Is she still breathing? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Is that genitalia? Um, no, but anyway, I uh, look at that. Now, I take that image, right? And I go up here to edit, copy the clipboard, right? Now I can go and I can upload any picture I want from anywhere. And edit, paste from clipboard. Now I got Dingleberry. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. I mean, you see these graphics on the news all the time. They're really not hard to make. No. And you want to hear the sad part? That cost you eight hundred dollars from a graphic designer. Good grief! That's um, I'm in the wrong business. You see how quick I just made that? Yeah. You could you could take your patch design, your picture of your rig or whatever, and put your picture right in front of it, and you could be done in five minutes. I'm telling you guys, graphics, man. Anybody can do graphics. It's easy. I've got I've got a thing I did. It's a wallpaper. With pooping bowls, I'll have to send it to you. Pooping you have a what? lot of fun with that. Well, anything pooping's got to be fun. <laughs> with pooping bowls. <laughs> yeah. So, 
that that is a fun website. Uh, if you guys have never uh, never used uh, Lunapic, uh, you should try it. Take a picture of yourself and just stick it in there and uh, and see what it does and see if it'll cut you out of it. If it does it, then just go find another picture, uh, a different picture, and it will it'll cut you out of that one. I guarantee it. I've had great luck getting this thing to cut cut me out of pictures. So, <coughs> all right. Any questions on Lunapic? So that's how they did Bernie when he was sat in the uh, the deck chair with his gloves on. I guess probably. Um, a lot of that stuff's done using chroma key, which is like green screen. Um, <laughs> this is actually even newer technology than that. This is. Um, this is literally like brand new technology. They just added this feature. Here, let me get out of this. They just added this feature, auto background, auto blur background, auto pixelate background, and smart object removal. They just added those four. I haven't even really played with them much yet. Um, and any every page you're on, if you scroll to the bottom, there's your undo right there. Hmm. So at any point, if I want to go back to see, you can see where earlier I was making those cutout flags. I made those cutout flags for the website. I started with the with the blue sky and I removed the background so I could put them in the newsletter. I do everything with this program. Anyway, all right, enough of that. Cool stuff. I've given you guys all my secrets. And I've already told you guys about all the billboard <laughs> makers and all the sign makers. And there's there's a website for everything. But I've got a little project that I'm seriously thinking about doing. And I think it might be of interest to you guys. Okay. If you're uh, up to it. As long as we're not doing it between now and the time I go to bed. No. Nope. No, it's okay. a uh, it's a radio project. <laughs> Unfortunate. Well, let me show you and see what you think. Can I share? Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Okay, here is a little four-band digital transceiver only. Oh, QRP so, labs. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of. Uh, yeah, it's part of. Um, QRP Labs, currently, as it says there, but they're about to come back on, online. They sold 500 of the first batch. They only launched this in September. They uh, sold 500 of the first batch, and then they sold 380-odd of the second batch, and they're out. They've redesigned the board to take a new chip because the old chip wasn't available anymore. And it's just about to hit the market again. It's going to be a little more than five watts this time because the the chip is a little better. Um, but it's got built-in USB. It's got a built-in sound card. It's uh, got serial ports for cat control. It's five-band digital only. So it's uh, it's got a um, uh, uh, one of those uh, TX TCXO crystals uh, to standardize the frequency and it's got a uh, sdr <coughs> receiver all built in um wow. for the pricely sum actually the price is kind of closer to uh, 80 90 bucks because it's 65 without the case and i think the case for 20 bucks is actually well worth it well worth it yeah because that's, that's what it looks like. It's only got three sockets on it. It is a kit, so you have to build it. Uh, this is what it looks like inside. You're responsible for putting all these on, although these are already made. Toroid. They already they already wind the toroids. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, but so, you got to actually solder them on the board? Yes. Oh, yeah. that's out for me then. Well, I don't know. It's a good Well, You can buy from these people a practice kit. Yeah. For about 20 bucks but you know you can get the case for 20 and you can get the paraport for a dollar if you want i mean it's probably worth it just for a buck but i thought that's good because then you know you you could put it on a raspberry pi and you could put it onto a monitor and you have got a four band 
uh, FT8, FT4, or any of the other mode yeah. transceiver for, you know, well, less than 200 bucks. So I'm seriously thinking about doing this. I think it might be a nice project. As he, I've got... he, he lives in Turkey. But yes. His, uh, his, uh, he's got a place here in, like in Missouri. Because yeah. I ordered a couple of the, uh, oh, what do they call them? The Q, uh, a couple of their uh, other QRP rigs. A couple of oh, he's got, he's got a ton of stuff. I mean, he's got, you know, yeah, well, all, all these are his things. kits, He's but they're, you know, but anyway, I thought the, uh, uh oh, I lost it. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the neatest websites on the whole internet, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. So I didn't it's, know he had come out with this. It's very well designed. He only came out with it in September and yeah. he sold 600 within the first, I think, four or five days. Yeah. And, and, um, it was only minutes that he sold the other 400 or 380 odd. Wow. Uh, um, because basically, you know, it's such a deal. 65 yeah. bucks, you know, as I say, probably better to budget 100. But even so, getting a four band transceiver that will yeah, do. 80, uh, 40, 30, and 20. Yep. Can't beat that. No. And it's got, you don't need, it's got a uh, uh, SDR receiver built in. Yeah. It's got a sound card built in. I mean, you'd pay more than that just for a sound card. Oh, yeah. I, I figured that's a pretty good uh, deal, so I'm going to I'm gonna go for it. But I thought it might be interesting, you know, get a few people to have a go at it. might be a good uh, project. Teach uh, Ian to solder or solder. How do you, uh, how do you keep my hand from shaking? Uh, alcohol. I, I've I've never had a steady enough hand for that. Alcohol. Gonna get him drunk. Well, as long as it's not uh, Russian vodka, and nothing else yeah. would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the other thing. Is look, this is the new chart. I got this off him. I, you can see that. Um, so basically, at 12 volts, it will actually run eight watts now. So, because that's with the new synthesizer, the new chips and whatever. But he's still what sick in with nine volts at yeah. five, uh, five watts. And that's all three, all four bands. So it's pretty linear. I think it's pretty good. I'm going to go for one, I think. So. I just made a contact in Texas at 30 watts. Yeah, there you go. 40 you could, meters. You could... Uh, probably do that comfortably on uh, 80 meters might be a struggle qrp i don't know but for that kind of money i thought it might be a good uh 40 30 and 20 will probably be fine yeah but uh there you go and see That's, i uh, i'm thinking when i'm looking at this what i'm thinking of is this would be perfect for some place out in the middle of nowhere to go set it up as a QRP rig that you can dial into. Yeah. Where you could go somewhere where there's no noise floor at all. And, oh, well, you yeah. Know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you were to, like, I got a little cabin in the mountains, but for some reason the radio doesn't work any better up there than it does down here. And I think it's because I'm under a canopy of hardwood trees. There's no way to get out from underneath them. But someone might have a cabin that's out in the middle of this wide open field out in Tennessee or something. And this would be something you could put there, hook it to the internet, and just remote into it using the uh, Raspberry Pi software. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking a dedicated Raspberry Pi to this. Right. And a monitor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously a keyboard and a mouse. And, I mean, you've got a nice little, you know, FT8, FT4 rig yeah. that, uh, you know, could be fun. And, uh, you know, it only draws an amp, just over an amp, when you're running 5 watts. So figure maybe 2 amps when it's running 8 watts. See, Anything under 10. Amps. You right. could run that all day on a marine battery. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... You could, you could charge that with one of Al Gore's solar cells and have plenty left over. Yeah. Yeah, you could sell it on your way out, couldn't you? You know? Yeah. <laughs> But I, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, 
and and you know his stuff works. Oh yeah. That's the other thing is that there's no. Uh, it's not like you know a couple of Chinese guys in the back of a fish and chip shop in uh, Bangkok or somewhere. You know th this Plus is. Uh, it doesn't have spyware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought that might be something that would interest a few. Maybe I don't know. Check that out. That's neat. Yeah. I've been on his site in a while. That'll that'll go well with the uh, with your hex beam. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that would probably work with it too because it's you're you're putting it all in one direction. Yeah, you don't need a tuner. You know, anything that's yeah, gonna yeah, you, yeah, everything's linked out. You wouldn't need a tuner at all. Anything that's that's, uh, that's what I'm looking for. I I am a I am I have become of the belief that when you run a tuner, there's just a certain amount of loss you're gonna get. Sure. I love I love my rotor tuner, but I swear if when I go to my six my my six meter and it's cut exactly right, you know, and it's the exact SWR, it just seems to do so much better when I route it around this thing and I don't have to go through this tuner. Oh yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, if you've got a resonant antenna, that's zero. You know, anything anything between your your uh, transceiver and the antenna even switches and stuff like that they're all going to give you some small amount of loss and if you've got you know big ass coils and all the rest of it it's it's bound to introduce something of a loss i mean you'll get a gain for being resonant but your antenna is no more resonant than it was before it's just that the system has made the the transceiver now sees resonance it doesn't do anything to improve the your antenna of the, of the tuner is to fool a transmitter absolutely right. so it's best to get it resonant or as close as you can right so i can't wait to get this hex beam up oh my god i can't uh, wait uh, because you know what i used to be i used to be all about 40 40 40 but once i got my antenna put up better and i got it in the right place and i got it in a better position and out front of the trees all of a sudden, 10, 12, 15, 17 have all opened up to me now. Yeah. And man, they're a lot of fun in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. So I now I want this because I want that 10 during the day. I, I can I, right now with my long wire tuned up through this tuner on 10 meters, tuned all the way as far one way as it will go with both the knobs almost as far as they'll go. To get there, I tuned this thing for 10 meters, and I got two contacts in South Africa in the middle of the day today. Yeah. So it, it's uh, it's it's a, a little bit amazing to me what I can get with it. Let's see. I had uh, well, I, I did good on 30 today too. Yeah, I did well on 30 and 10 today. I don't know how many countries I got. I got a bunch of countries on there. Uh... 10 meters today. Yeah, I got Australia on 20 this morning. Awesome. Retail. Um, there's Asia, Japan this morning on 20. Well, there's my uh, 10 meter today. Yeah, on 10 today, I got South America, Venezuela, Argentina. And then yeah, Africa, Uruguay. I got two different ones in South uh, South Africa. I got two different contacts, uh, eight minutes apart. And then I got uh, Denmark, Germany, and Croatia, all on 10 meters this afternoon. Yeah, I got Germany, England, Uruguay, Argentina, Norway, Bonaire, Japan, Brazil, Ireland, Mexico, and Ecuador, Canary Islands, so yeah it was good it was good I, that's the first time i've been up on 10. well it's, it's kind of seriously i and love 10 and we're not even in magic band season i, I worked what? 10 last magic band season and i recommend magic band season for everybody that's why i bought the uh i bought that uh six meter uh five element beam for magic band season and then I let it sit here for six months until Magic Band season came up. And then I stuck it up there. 
and uh, I had an absolute blast. Magic band season, you could actually watch the clouds going from east to west across the map yep. based on where all the crossing contact lines are. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, well, on, on winter field day this year, we got more contacts on six meters than we did on uh, uh, any other band. It went out, but it's come back on. It's gone out twice and come back on. I'm wondering if my computer connected to another nearby Wi-Fi. I, we're getting ready to end. I'll be, I'll be in just a minute. My internet's down in my house. My internet went down here briefly and came back up. So I'm wondering if maybe my internet went down and then my laptop is connected to a nearby Wi-Fi source. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see where I'm connected to. Yes, I'm connected to Xfinity Open, which is my neighbor's Wi-Fi. So my Wi-Fi is down right now. So I'm on my neighbor. I'm on a borrowed internet connection, and all my other computers have no internet connection. And my looks like my Broadcastify feeds are down. Yep, they're down. Everything's down. The only reason this this stayed up was because I've got um, I'm signed into several of my neighbors as a redundancy. All right. Uh, does anybody have anything else while the internet's still working? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get going here. I got to get in there and get the internet going. We got rid of our cable boxes, so now when the internet's out, my wife has no TV at all. I got some. Go ahead. Back on. Hang on. I gotta put the headset back on here. Let me switch the. Okay, I'm not talking to you, Micah. I'm talking to the tech net. Um, so uh, two or three tech nets ago, I was showing me doing some CAD modeling on my computer for a project where I'm making a model of a movie prop. And um, after about a week of printing, it took a lot of printing. I have, um, still not completely finished, but I have the first part of the model here. And um, it's still not glued together completely because I need to sand it down a little bit because the printing is ever so slightly uh, inaccurate and there's a little bit of warping and stuff. So, But here is this big old piece. This is the main body of the chariot it's called and the windows came out really well you can see that there is still in, in two halves here i haven't glued these two halves together but um yeah it came out pretty well i still have to sand it there's a lot of sanding like these rough spots on the side is where the supports were i still have to sand those um but it came out pretty well the back of it came out well too holes for the lights and everything um it's gonna be a little bit there's gonna be an antenna on the top and a like a little I don't know what you want to call it, like a cage kind of thing for putting tools in. One problem that did happen, if you look here, you see that right where underneath the little pole, it's supposed to be flat there. But for whatever reason, the printer printed printed it all warped. See how the, 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 po the post thing is like an oval shape? Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I am talking. I am talking. It did not. This thing, it, it warped it on both models, on both sides, because this is two, two different pieces. It, they seem right in the middle there. It's two different pieces. So it warped it for whatever reason. Mike says it came off the print bed, but I don't really believe that because the rest of it was fine. And it's just this one area that's, that's weird. It's like it's melted kind of. One side is a little bit better than the other. Actually, one side doesn't appear to be melted hardly at all, except for on the, the oval-shaped post thing. I don't know. The printing turned out weird, but um, yeah, I've successfully taken the three-dimensional virtual file and turned it into an actual physical thing. It's pretty big, and um, it's coming along really nice. That's really and, cool. Yeah, I'm going to put the doors next for it. i got to buy another spool of filament because I, I, I messed up one. I was doing the corner piece, and you have to remove the supports. And so it, build, it prints like this, <laughs> and it builds up a bunch of filler up to these points so that it can have something to put weight on, you know, as it prints, it can't just print out an angle. Um, and when it did that, you have to remove the supports when you're done. And that's what all this rough stuff is right here. It's a little crunchy stuff. 
Um, and I actually broke one of them, broke the window area because the supports were so hard to get off that it cracked the actual part you want. It cracked it trying to remove the support. So that is kind of a problem with printing stuff that needs supports. But other than that, um, it's pretty nice. I just super glued the two halves together and it's perfectly fine. Everything lined up nice and good. I hope to have this thing ready for the ham fest. I think it would be pretty cool. And given that there will be a lot of technically minded people there, I bet a lot of them will recognize it. So that will be pretty cool. I'll have it set up. I need to build the uh, trailer. There's actually like a trailer for it. And I need to put a banner on the side that says TechNet on it. And then drive it around with my new uh, FPV transmitter. Oh, that's another thing I got recently that I kind of want to show for a second. Oops. I um have uh, I've showed my RC truck on here before a few times I think but um I have this truck and I like driving it uh and I have the video transmitter on it so I like staying inside the house or sitting down somewhere outside and then driving it a long way away much further than you would normally drive a radio control model um and my last transmitter um this little thing is a UHF repeater uh these transmitters that I have operate on 2.4 gigahertz at really low power um, and so in order to get the kind of distance I want, I need something with more power and a lower frequency. So I got the easy UHF thing, this thing here, and it was never, it never performed very good. It was, it was, it just performed really bad. So I upgraded recently to a two watt transmitter. So this goes up to two Watts and I bought a brand new signal stick for it. Um, this is a dual band antenna for UHF and VHF, but I bought the signal stick and I put a pigtail on it like 20 inches long i think um put a pigtail on it i put a little uh loop around it what are those oh, things tiger tail, yeah yeah got a little pigtail on it and then the little receiver receives from the remote and then it's like a repeater basically it's just a repeater for uh controlling a model so this thing uh with the new antenna i think the new antenna really is what made it perform better than this one did i never changed the stock antenna and it's a really bad antenna so I kind of didn't need this, but this also has two watts, whereas this only goes up to 400 milliwatts. So this was not a waste of money because I got a bunch more power. But I put the, this thing on here and I put the new antenna on and I ran it at low power. And I drove all around the neighborhood, um, everywhere that my video signal would was clear enough to see what I was doing. And I didn't lose control signal a single time. So this was pretty cool. This was like 70 bucks, I think. And they've actually discontinued this, but Amazon had them in stock. So I'm lucky I got one before they disappeared forever. Um, but that was a cool thing I did. And I was so happy to finally have a control, a control link that would outlast the video feed because that was, that's was that been a major bottleneck for a long time. And it's really frustrating because you can't tell when you're about to lose control signal unless you have telemetry, which I don't have telemetry. So I'd just be driving along, video signals perfectly clear, and then all of a sudden the truck just stops moving. Now you're dead in the water down the street, and you know someone could come pick up the truck and steal it or something. So this was a pretty good thing. I also put a signal stick on the actual truck because it had some pretty bad antennas on it before. So more than anything, I think the antennas made a big difference in this um, recent adventure. But there's the truck. Four, it's a four-wheel drive crawler um it's a hobby grade it, like you push the throttle just a little bit and it goes real slow and everything it's got all that it's got a little there's a little video camera right there um and then the of course the uhf receiver and the other signal stick on here so um now it's got a pretty big antenna on it and yeah the performance is just amazing and it's got i have an arduino on here as well which I use to control the headlights because I put working headlights in it so you can turn the headlights on and everything. But yeah, that's kind of my little show and tell. Um, it's a lot of fun to drive around in the neighborhood because everyone's like, "Where?" I've been out there with it before. Like I'll be driving down almost on the other side of the neighborhood and then someone will come out you know, for a walk and they come down the street and they're like, are you driving that thing? I just saw it driving around all by itself. So usually I expect to see someone there with it, but I'm remotely driving my Mars Rover thing. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. Now you got to figure out how to hook that thing up and run it through a local repeater so you can drive it up to the convenience store. Yeah, really. I need the, uh, I need to get a, uh, 900 megahertz video transmitter, uh, like a three watt video transmitter or something. And, um, 
yeah, run the control link through through a actual ham repeater, and then you just have infinite range. That'd be pretty cool. Why not? Why not run everything through a smartphone that it, that has Wi-Fi? Or, or I experimented. Or Wi-Fi, you know. I experimented with that. Um, that you could drive it anywhere in the world. Yeah. So I I, I had a, I put a Raspberry Pi on it at one point, and I created a web server, and I got to the point where the I, I hosted a website, and so you went to the website, you would have controls on there for the speed controller and the servo. And you, I just had like sliders I could use to control the position and that worked. I could drive it over Wi-Fi. Um, I didn't have a 4g or I didn't have a hot, well, I did have a hotspot. I never tried it, but the main problem was I really wanted to transmit video over the link. I wanted to have a, a USB webcam plugged in and just have the feed on the website. Um, right. That was my goal, but that was hard to do. It was beyond, well, it wasn't hard. It's not necessarily hard. It's just, that I don't have the, knowledge of how to do it so i messed around with that for a long time trying to get that to work and i found someone else who did like the exact thing i wanted to do but of course they didn't share how they did it so that's always a frustration um but yeah i did try that and i probably will revisit that project sometime in the future because if people have done it and it does work especially now with like 5g and everything you got high speed data everywhere um you can easily have a, a 720p 30 fps webcam on there streaming and then just use like a, a controller, like a game controller uh, to drive the truck remotely. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Because now we get into a situation where we, instead of a truck, we put it in a drone and we fly it all over town. Yep. There's actually uh, people, I've seen that done um, with the Parrot drones. The Parrot Disco is one people do it a lot with. It's a, it's a, it's a single wing uh, aircraft. It's like uh yeah, it's an RC airplane, and it's really efficient. It can fly for hours, um, and people put it on a 4G modem all the time, and they fly it uh, over that connection, and they'll just fly. Someone flew it all the way across a um, – it was like from one island to another in, in Hawaii oh, wow. or something. They flew it a incredible distance, and it was fine the whole way. So, yeah, people have done that. That would be fun, uh, that'd be fun if you could, do, you know, if you got to get your buddy something across town, you just put it on that thing and fly it over there. Just yeah. Set your waypoint and have it go. Yep. Set so a waypoint, wait release it. Yep. So you said you were going to get it ready for a, a ham fest. Which ham fest? The Huntsville Ham Fest in March. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, March. Sorry, it's not March. It's August. August. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, August 25th and 26th. Don't quote me on that. You can go to hark.net to hrc.net to find when the ham fest is. But yeah, it's in August and me and uh, Colin are going to have a table there set up with uh, TechNet and North Alabama tech team signs on it and everything. Um, so we're going to go, we have a table already reserved and um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do a big, that ham fest is pretty good. Y'all probably know about the ham fest. Oh yeah. I've been to Huntsville. That's a big ham fest and it's a good one. They oh, have yeah. two, don't they? Do they have two? No, there's not just the one in August. I think there's only one once a year in August. There might be a you might be thinking of field day. They they do go pretty all out on field day as well. Shelby, okay. North Carolina is the next weekend. So it was always when I was in Atlanta, I always kind of figured, do I go to Huntsville or do I go to Shelby? Because you wind up going to two ham fest. You know, two different weekends, right after one, right after the other. It almost seems pointless. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be able to get home because you'll spend all your money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Have to wash dishes for gas money. <laughs> all right. Well, Does do anybody have else? anything else? I have to rob a few banks for gas money now. Yeah. I was. Uh, anybody else have anything else they want to talk about tonight? I'm starting to really get tired. I don't got much. At least my internet's back up. I believe all my broadcastify feeds came back up on their own. Oh, my uh, internet computer's back up, and my radio computer's back up. Isn't so we're good there. Problems solve themselves. <laughs> well, I went in there. I just unplugged it and plugged it back in. The lights weren't blinking. So, and my wife's watching Roku. 
my um, my grandchild's watching Roku. My son-in-law's watching Roku on three different TVs. <laughs> and uh, I'm out here running a net. Plus, I got three Broadcastify feeds going. Plus, I'm broadcasting on YouTube and on Zoom. Uh, and I, I and everything else I've still got going in here. So, um, yeah, I have an unlimited internet. We used to have unlimited, and they told us one time, you know, when you say unlimited, you still have a one terabyte limit. Yeah, that was such a skit. And I'm like, we need to talk about the word unlimited and what it means. Yeah. So, um, when I renegotiated with Comcast, I got rid of all five cable boxes. I got rid of my phone. I got rid of, uh, uh, what was the other thing? Um, anyway, we're down to just internet. That's all that's left. We had all these different services through the through uh, cable, and we're down now to just nothing but internet. And the, the one we got now is truly unlimited. And mm. trust me, I test it. <laughs> They don't expect anybody to ever use it. They don't expect anybody to come close to one terabyte. But I did one time. I was oh, we blew through a terabyte. <laughs> I went over it twice, and the second time was when we we decided to do our whole thing. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we blew through it all twice. Going all the time, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. When you start watching all your video online for your TVs, uh, it, uh, it you can go over a terabyte in a, in a week. But um, all right. Uh, anything else? All right. If you can try to make the watch net next week and we'll hopefully in a few weeks have it hooked up to a node so you guys can participate from afar. Um, and we're going to continue to work on uh, if you guys know of a repeater or some way that we can expand the watch net. Get with me. We'll do it. I know several of you, several of you have sent me emails. I still got to get back. I will respond to you this weekend. And uh, I guess that's about it. I took my camera, one of my old cameras off my old security system was still working good. And I put, I put it up here. Can you guys see that? It looks up my tower. There's, that's the light on my tower. You can see it. And what's mm -hmm. really cool, you can't see it in the video, but you can actually see all my Yegis up there and which way they're facing. Yeah. Oh, and cool. It's really cool. Yeah. And so during the day, especially... I've got a camera, I got a digital camera all the way up at 40 feet that spins around with the tower. And that's, uh, that's the lower right one here. And then I also have the one at the bottom looking up at the tower so I can see exactly where, because I got two Yegis, but they're not facing the same direction. I've got it set up to where um, my one Yegi is, is hitting NI4CE, but my six meter beam is actually off on an angle. So it's shooting towards the Midwest. Because I it, I wanted a little bit more of an angle on that, so uh, that's kind of my whole. Hex beam camera next. Do what? Hex beam hex camera beam next. Camera. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably going to move the camera from the very top thing down below the hex beam because I don't want it to interfere at all with that hex beam. Yeah, that would probably so work great. I'll probably bring it down to about a foot above the uh, six meter, and I'll yeah. shoot it out to where it's looking out the six meter out the beam. Yeah. Be kind of cool. That would be kind but, of sick. Uh, but yeah, I like this view here because I could see my tower and I could see it bounce, bouncing around in the wind and see where my Yagis are and everything. Because I'm good. I'm I'm going to be set up in here for storms. I've got my, uh, we're buying a generator enclosure in the next month. It's going to go on the side of the house. My 5KW generator is going to mount in there and it's going to be hooked up to the house all the time. So all I have to do when it's time to switch is go out there and turn off the big main that comes in from FPNL, turn that big main off um, and start my generator, get it up to speed and then go over and click the two switches on and boom, my house and my shed fully powered by my five, five KW generator. And then I've still got the 3,500 KW generator. I won from the FMARC club uh, yeah. and I've still got it as my backup generator. So, um, I'm, I am set up here for emergencies. I, I don't have it all ready yet, but by the time we get into June and July, I will be ready here to be, uh, a net controller for no matter what's happening out there in the world. So, uh, it should be pretty good. And I'm hoping to get a few more people. I know Rick, 
and I talked about it. Uh, but I'm looking to get two or three other people that uh, that can also be net control. Because here's the thing. The one thing that's concerning me is a lot of times we have really bad weather start up during the afternoon hours. And I'm at work from 2 to 8. Um, yeah. That concerns me because I'm going to need someone else to be able to turn this thing on. Not necessarily all of it, the internet and everything, but at least just the local part of it. Need to be able to turn that on and get it going. Um, and then from work, I can dial into here and I can get all the rest of it going on the back end. That's not a problem. I just need somebody to work the radio side of it. Uh, so we're going to be working on that and getting that all situated. And then again, I want to attach it to other things and get up other repeaters and all that. And we're going to figure all that out. Um, but... I'm really working to get this shack ready to go. I got, uh, I'm going to have it to where um, the two meter call is going to be on its own Ringo Ranger. And I'm going to have another VHF uh, on its own Ringo Ranger on the other side of the property. So I'll be able to monitor uh, the 685. I'll be able to monitor the two meter call channel. And I'll be able to monitor the watch net on three separate radios on three separate antennas. So... It'll allow me to do everything at one time, uh, and that, I, that's important. Um, and when we go into emergency mode, I'm gonna I'm working on already getting my HF Winlink going. I, I want to get w Winlink going so that I can send and receive emails without internet. Um, I've never been able to get Winlink going. Um, when people tell me Winlink's really easy, it works great, it's easy. I want to slap them right in the face. I've been trying for a year and a half to get Winlink going, and I've never been able to get it going. I sent one email on Winlink. I've managed to send one email. Uh, so maybe at some point we'll revisit that. Maybe we can all help me get my Winlink going. Yeah, um, but I really, really, really want to get Winlink going for both VHF and for HF. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything else? Mm -hmm. All right, let's make it last call. Last call for check-ins. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to let you. it go. You guys have a great weekend, and if there's anything I can help with, let me know. And, uh, Rick, if you need help tomorrow or Sunday, let me know. I'll stop by. How how, I, how can I get a hold of you? Um, I'll tell you what. I'll send you an email with my phone number. Okay. That's okay, I'll works. send it right now. I'm going to send it right now before I forget Is that right, I have I, you in my phone? K4RAB at ARRL, right? Yeah. You can okay. use that one. Okay, you I'll send it right Rick now. Rick at K4REB.net, too. Okay. All right, I'll send it right now. All right, man, I'll catch you guys later. Everybody have a great night out there. All right. And bye. We'll see you later. 7-3, all. <laughs>